a light came up on my dashboard, so I threw the dashboard out. Problem solved. Great news from the campaign trail. Rishi Sunak managed to get through a whole day without offending veterans, laughing at a doctor, getting photographed at a clown school, or falling face first into a child's birthday cake. Good news too for Labour as Nigel Farage wins a poll to be the next leader of the Conservative Party. Keir Starmer could just phone it in at this point. He could go on holiday for the next month and it wouldn't affect his chances. In other news, there's a mystery illness sweeping the country, but it could not possibly be down to the record amounts of raw sewage being pumped into the water. Why would anybody think that? That and more coming up with me, Nick Abbott, after the new news at 10 on LBC. On your radio, on Global Player, and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation, this is LBC. LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. You're joking. Well, let's get back to it. Yes, the Prime Minister attended a fete in Yorkshire where he kicked a cane away from a pensioner and pushed a wheelchair user into a lake. Other than that, it was incident free. The Prime Minister visited a walled garden at Auckland Castle, Bishop Auckland, today on the campaign trail. Somebody built a wall around him. <laughs> hey, hey, Fishy. If there's a concrete wall in front of you, go through it, go over it, go around it, but get to the other side of that wall. According to the Press Association, an opportunity for the media to ask questions of Rishi Sunak did not take place as it was originally planned. Hmm. Why could that possibly be? One reporter from the Conservative election bus said he had been told that Sunak would not be talking to the national media and there would be no interviews. He's saving his voice for the apologies that he's going to have to be giving for whatever he does next. I am very sorry that I screwed up. Screwed up. Totally screwed up. I mean, I am so, so sorry. sorry. You just don't know how sorry I am. He's I'm sorry. Sorry. The huddle when the Prime Minister takes a few questions from reporters off camera has been cancelled and the reporters have been told this is due to... Time pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Nothing to do with Fishy not being able to put one foot in front of the other without somehow managing to blow it off with a shotgun he didn't even know he was holding. At the garden, Sunak watered plants for the camera. And there he is, look, with that permagrin that must be hurting his face by now, holding, holding a watering can the right way round. Well done, Fishy. <laughs> But for what exactly? I mean, what's the message here? Trust the dear leader, he knows which is the pouring end of a watering can? I'm just surprised he didn't try to operate it with a credit card. And as he, as he was engaging in that stunt for the cameras, members of the public could be seen gathering at a hillside above the garden to try to catch a glimpse of the dear leader and express their approval with what a bang-up job he is doing. Three cheers for the Prime Minister. Hip hip! You know, it's funny, but from a distance, it, it almost sounds like booing. Texts and tweets and such from last night. Paul says, I'm waiting for Sunak to tell us that the only reason Starmer stayed was because he had no other plans. We have a plan, 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 plan and plan, plan and plan, plan, or you just go back to square one. Yes, let's go back to square one. Martin says, I think we can all agree that Fishy has united the country in condemnation of his utter incompetence and uselessness. Or as he would say it... This government will have integrity, professionalism and accountability at every level. Michael says it would appear that the plan was to bankrupt the entire country and everyone in it. In which case everything is going <laughs> extremely well. Everything is going extremely well. Everything is going extremely well. Chris says, why are we wasting money by printing new banknotes and coins? It would be better just to scrap cash, go card or mobile payment only. Many businesses already refuse cash, says Chris. Chris, no. And furthermore... No, 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 no. What happens when the internet goes down? What happens when the card payment at the place of your choice fails on you, as it did with me just the other day, getting out of a cab? Some shouty black cab driver who was yelling at me before I'd even got into the cab, and this is, you know, practically a new experience for me because I don't take cabs, particularly black cabs, because they are a luxury product. 
Oh, I can only dream of enjoying a luxury product. Anyway, I hailed one and... Um, well, actually, the full story is on the podcast that I've just done with Carol McGiffin. Yeah. So if you want to hear it, then uh, it's on that. It's called What's Your Problem with Nick and Carol? Oh, right, yeah. In which Carol and I try to solve people's problems while laughing our faces off. Ask for it by name. On an internet near you, what's your problem with Nick and Carol? Oh, right, yeah. I think you'll love it. No, you have to have money, cash money. You will, you will miss it when it's gone. You know the uh, the the um, what was it? The, some live events company just got hacked uh, the other day, and something of the order of one point four billion people's in per close personal private information got uh, squirted up the internet. Can you believe that? And then some bank they said oh, we've been hacked as well, but don't worry, uh, everybody. Because they didn't get any of our customers' details, only our staff details. Who believes that? Um. I bet uh, banks get uh, hacked all the time. It's just that they don't want to tell us that because it might make us upset and trust them less. At some point, the sun uh, is going to uh, squirt out one of its... Um, hot magma jets, I've got no idea, and uh, it will take out our GPS and our internet too. At some point, probably not in the too distant future, you will come up against the problem that the card reader in the place you're in has stopped working, or they didn't charge it up right. And then what are you going to do? Cash money. Let's not lose it. JB says, I don't understand this schedule excuse. How long? Uh, and by the way, the, you're, you want to go card or mobile payment. There's so many people that don't even bother to take a card out of the house. They rely on their mobile phone. And guess what gets snatched out of your hand virtually every second of every day in a city near you? Your mobile phone. And there goes your ability to do anything. Cash. Take the, like uh, Reckless Eric said, take the K-A-S-H. Rock and roll! Exactly. JB says, these are all texts and tweets from last night, by the way, so keep that in mind. He says, I don't understand this schedule excuse. How long have we known which day D-Day is? <laughs> uh, let me think now. It's uh, 80 years. Correct. Yeah, 80 years, mathematically speaking. Yeah. Well, Rishi Sunak's diary doesn't go back 80 years. Give him a break. I didn't understand that excuse either. That, that made absolutely no ex no sense whatsoever. Uh, oh, the 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 D-Day um, uh, commemorative events were planned ages ago. That's why I had to leave. That makes no sense because we know that uh, interview with ITN wasn't planned ages ago because it was specifically about uh, him being on the campaign trail, and so it could not possibly have been. Uh, put in the diary before Fishy announced that we were going to have an election. Now, I do believe that that announcement came earlier than 80 years ago. So that excuse just makes no sense. Did my explanation of that ex excuse making no sense make sense? No. <laughs> well, it fits right in then, doesn't it? Bab says, I wish the election was uh, next uh, Thursday. It's so uninspiring, I can't stand it, says Babs. Hey, Babs! Stop whining! <laughs> she says, this cast of characters on the uh, debate last night, some of whom look like the remnants of a village hall pantomime, notably Penny Morden, channeling her best Maggie Thatcher impression. She's obviously auditioning for the star part as the next Conservative Party leader. That is, if there is a party left after the 4th of July. Smaller parties nailed it, in my opinion, says Babs. <laughs> I looked at the amount of people who watched that, and it's, it was kind of dispiriting, really. The BBC general election debate between seven senior political party figures was watched by just slightly more than three million viewers. What? Yeah, an average audience of 3.2 million tuned in on uh, Friday to watch Penny Hair Helmet and uh, Angela Colour Clash shout over each other to the point that you couldn't make out what either of them was saying. And yet somehow you knew that at least 50% of the exchange was the opposite of the truth as opposed to 100% of what came out of certain individuals' mouth, um, the, the mouth that seems to unhinge like a snake eating a baby deer. You know, that one. <laughs> 
the politicians clash over uh, D-Day and support for war veterans and immigration and the state of the NHS, and uh, according to the overnight ratings, nobody cared. The lineup for the first multi-party debate in this year's campaign featured Penny Morden out of the Conservative Party, with hair like that. I mean, with hair like that, which other party was she going to come from? It looked like she was hiding a bust of Margaret Thatcher in that do. And then there was Labour's uh, Angela Rayner, uh, Lib Dem Daisy Cooper, SNPS to Stephen Flynn, the Green Party's Carla Denyer, that nice chap from Wales whose name I don't know how to pronounce. And people were um, upset with me last night about uh, the fact that I was concentrating on the way they look. That's what everybody was doing. People weren't interested in what they say. I mean, we elected this guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where, 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 where do, we... do you think that people were interested in what he was actually saying? Like drilling down to the the fine points in his proposals? No, it was a three-word slogan that got him a PM. Get Brexit done. And uh, people in a high dudgeon were uh, emailing la last night saying, how dare I concentrate or even mention the way that any of those people looked. As though they hadn't spent uh, th uh, three hours before going on TV, changing outfits and doing their hair just so. Do me a favour. That's what everybody was doing looking at what they look like. Looking at what they look like. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. Looking at what they look like. You can't avoid it. We're a visual species. Nobody was remotely interested in what they were saying. I mean, because most of it wasn't true, apart from, apart from anything else. I mean, fool us once, and uh, shame on you. And so on. Won't get fooled again like the you. Rock and roll! Except we will get fooled again, over and over and over again. And so what we tend to do is we just make instant decisions based on somebody's appearance. And each of them appeared um, as, as, as though they were, uh, you know, the embodiment of the party that they came from. Apart from the guy from Wales, and you couldn't really tell. He just looked like a business person. And the guy from Scotland didn't really look like a <laughs> So apart from those two, the others, you knew exactly where they came from. Just by looking at them. And that's what most people do. The, I mean, like, like, like this guy, uh, Mr. Blobby. Um. Yeah. People voted for him because oh, he's that funny bloke off the telly. They weren't concentrating on what he was actually saying because it was just bluster and bluff, banging on like a nincompoop. The great big greedy nincompoop. Well, yes, okay, the great big greedy nincompoop. <laughs> So I was completely correct in every respect by, uh, you know, concentrating for a small while on how they looked. Because that's what everybody was, uh, what was flitting through their mind as the few people that are actually be bothered to watch that were thinking while they were watching it. The debate had a peak in viewers towards the end of the broadcast, apparently. Presumably it was people tuning in expecting to, uh, it to have ended and celebrity sheep dancing on ice to have begun or whatever other nonsense they've got on. <laughs> Three million people, just over. That's a pretty small crowd. You know, there's almost 50 million registered voters in the UK, and only 6% of us could be bothered to tune in and see what our votes might bring us in less than a month. 6%. And it wasn't much better for the leaders' debate. 4.8 million could bring themselves to sit in front of it. That's not even 10% of the number of us that could vote on July the 4th. And 10%, by the way, is the same number of people that don't know who they're going to vote for. How are you going to decide if you don't engage with the process? Hey, sheeple, wake up. It's later than you think. And I was reading over and over in the right-wing press that Fishy won the leaders' debate. I read that opinion so many times that I assumed that it must be true. But a Redfield and Wilton poll of actual people, not the frothing commentariat, gave a decisive win for Skier. 38% said he uh, came out best compared to only 32% who thought that soon out won. And 25%, they said... Boring! <laughs> they tuned to animals do the funniest things, or whatever tripe was on the other side. But I do love those pussycat and puppy dog videos. <laughs> They're my favourite. So cute! And that wasn't just the one poll, by the way. Sky News quoted a JLP poll, which asked who performed best. 53%! said Skier Starmer. 33% said Sunak. 
and 14% could not do the mental arithmetic quick enough to figure out that that adds up to uh, 101%. Which is one more than uh, Rishi Sunak is uh, prepared to give. I am totally 100% on it. Only 100%. That's all he's uh, given us. I'm outraged. 0345. 6060973, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10, Nick Abbott, LBC. This is LBC. Hey. Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060973. Are you trying to be funny? Because I'm all out of laughs. No, there's nothing funny about... Well, there is small uh, kernels of uh, amusement to be had here and there. Like this. A new bombshell poll has revealed that Nigel Farage is the top choice to take over the Conservative Party if Labour wins the general election. <laughs> the, po the poll fought by uh, Redfield and Wilton surveyed 2,000 grown-ups on Wednesday and Thursday. Survey says 19% of voters, that is almost one in five, think that Nigel Farage should take over from uh, Mr Sunak. This is absolute tosh. That is just an opinion, Nigel. Um, nineteen percent of voters, one in five, think that Farage should take over from Sunak. Twenty-two percent of the people who voted Conservative in twenty nineteen support that idea. Twenty-two percent, and that is the top number. Apparently, Penny Morden was second on fifteen. James Cleverly, <laughs> sixteen per six percent. Uh, Kemi Badinock, five percent. Sweller Braverman, four percent. Pretty Patel, two, and Robert Jenrick, one percent. All lagging behind the reform uh, leader. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if, if I were a Tory, I'd say... No, 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 no. And an especially big no for Suella Bradman. And James Cleverley. And Pretty Patel. And Penny Morden. And Robert Jenrick. Don't they have anybody else? No. Voters who did not know which politician should uh, replace Mr Sunak as leader of the Conservatives... Uh, made up the largest share, 48%. And many of whom didn't so much not know as not care. Don't care. No, no. Uh, Benny says, how long before they announce the inheritance tax abolition? You know, I've been waiting for that. Are they going to have uh, one of their emergency budgets? Warning, warning. Wouldn't that be a good idea? Absolutely. <laughs> they could get her to write it. I am stunned that they haven't done that yet. I mean, time is ticking on. You're running out of it. I would do that straight away if I were you. The inheritance tax abolition. If they don't do that before the general election, I mean, not promise it, but, ju but do it. I will be stunned. Two reasons. First, it is a weirdly unpopular tax. Despite the fact that, and I don't know what the exact number is, so I'm going to make it up, 3% of the people in this country will actually be hit by the inheritance tax. Can you believe that? Yes. Yeah, I think it's probably right about that, 3%. But weirdly, though, we have been um, sort of programmed to believe that it is a very, very bad tax, even though almost all of us will not be affected by it. And the reason that we think that is because they don't call it the inheritance tax. Um, uh, they, they call it something else. And this is one of those neat tricks that they stole from the Republican Party. They call it the death tax. <laughs> yes, because nobody wants to think about death, do they? So people are just automatically against it. Death tax. Well, we don't want that. Don't want to contemplate our own demise, the point at which we fall off the end of the conveyor belt of life. No one wants to think about that. So it doesn't matter that it doesn't affect us. We just don't want it. So that's, that's one. Two, the Tories are, are going to be the ones in that 3%, aren't they? They're, they're the ones with all the money. So it would force the Labour Party to put that tax back on if they do one of those uh, emergency uh, freak-out budgets just before the, uh, the country goes to the polls and the Tories abolish inheritance tax. It would be for their own personal benefit and then force the Labour Party to put it back on and then say, ah, oh, well, of course, that's, uh, that shows you the Labour Party are the party of high taxation. And, uh, you know, various uh, assorted um, slow-thinking people who will uh, grumble in uh, agreement and determine never to vote for the Labour Party again. So... Uh, <laughs> 
in answer to the question, how long before they announce the inheritance tax abolition? Um, I would give it days, Benny. A matter of days. If they don't do it before the election, I will be shocked and stunned. And shocked. And stunned. Birmingham. Hello, Tracy. <laughs> Tracy. Tracy oh. is uh, hanging on the phone. Hanging on the telephone like Blondie. Doesn't realise she's on the air. Hello, Tracy. <laughs> oh, hi, Nick. Tracy. Oh, it's great to speak to you. Um, I love your show. Basically. Thanks. By the way, you make me laugh when the whole world makes you feel bloody depressed. Excuse yeah. Excuse my French. Miserable. I'm told not to swear. Yeah. Um, and yet you did it anyway. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Don't um, do it again. Yeah. I've put, I've put you in my diary. Ten till blah, 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 every yeah. weekend. Mm -hmm. What have you. Ten till you pass um, out every weekend. Right. Yeah. First off, I totally agree with you with Tishunak or whatever his name is. And all the rest of it. I've always been like, or I should maybe not say politics, but I've always been a socialist. So I don't understand why these people keep getting in over and over and over again when the majority of us aren't of the elite rich. Yeah. And I don't get it. It's a neat At trick. First, it's a. It's can a. I just, it's, yeah. yeah. About, Sorry. Go on. All I can say to anybody out there is, mm -hmm. remember one thing, forget manifesto. Ooh, see, uh, I knew she was going to do it. <laughs> I knew she was going to uh, stray over the line just one more time. Can't say that. I mean, if we were on television, you could say it. In fact, if we were on television, you could call your programme the thing that we have just dumped off the air. <laughs> you could put it in capital letters all over the TV screen. You could use that word, but you can't use it on the radio. Why? Nobody knows. I have no idea. But them's the facts, Jack. Sorry about that, Tracy. You're straight over the line. The invisible line that uh, surrounds radio. Don't get it myself, but there it is. She was very, very upset. In short, she said, yeah, or worse to that effect. Furious. <laughs> I do believe that she may have been refreshed. Booze. Keith says, I can't take this anymore. I'm asking Rishi Sunak to give me £3,000 and I'm off to Rwanda. Pronto. It really is a nice place. I saw Romesh Ranganathan there on BBC Two last night and it looked great, says Keith. You can give my flat to three small boat people so they can open a barber's shop. <laughs> They can open a barber's shop. <laughs> another one. We don't need another barber's shop round our way. I've got every other shop round my way is a barber's shop. That is actually true. And almost all of them are owned by the same person, which I find highly suspicious. And that person keeps opening new ones. Why is that then? Hmm? Odd. Uh, mind you, I mean, grow, uh, hair growing is never going to go out of fashion, is it? That's never going to stop. One of those uh, businesses that you will never be uh, in want of customers for. I wonder how long uh, Penny Morden's hair took to create. I mean, uh, how how much of an ozone hole did was uh, created by the spray that was uh, put on uh, on on that massive and impressive do? Hey, Penny, you don't need to put. All of that product in your hair. You just don't. Or you do if you don't want it to move. <laughs> she, she, could pro she could probably stand in a Force 10 hurricane and uh, not a hair on her head would be out of place. John says, I find one of the most used words in this election is bold. Is it? Bold. I thought it was clear. I thought clear was clearly the winner. I thought that everybody has been very clear. I'm genuinely unclear. Apart from uh, the Lizbot, who is genuinely unclear about, uh, you know, this or uh, anything else, as a matter of fact. Jerry says, I think that Taylor Swift might be the second coming. Jerry is a 12-year-old girl. I assume... <laughs> I still don't know any Taylor Swift songs. I mean, I, I feel at this point that I should. I should know at least one. 
You know, I mean, she seems to be a cultural phenomenon, and I don't have the slightest clue as to um, what she does. No idea. Colour me not a Swifty. Um, Keith says, I am reliably informed that Sunak left the D-Day celebrations early as he got a small boat back across the channel, and as an illegal immigrant, he is sending himself to Rwanda to prove that he sent someone there before the election. Well, that's just good planning. He's got a plan. We have a plan. Plan, plan, plan and plan, plan and plan, plan. Or you just go back to square one. Yes. Select. <laughs> and um, I feel embarrassed that I didn't read this out yesterday, but it was in a giant list of other texts and tweets and such, and so I missed it. Hannah texts, Could you wish my grandmother Sue a happy birthday? She's 80. She listens to you every night. You're on with that when you are on with that fail. 80 years old yesterday. Happy birthday, Grandma Sue. 0345 6060973. Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott, LBC. It's 10.30, the news headlines with Tim Daly. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. I think he's betraying a quite stupefying ignorance. Thanks, Bodge. You're the best. This anonymous text says Sunak does not seem to know the difference between a plan and a wish list. Well, a wish list is a wish list, and this is a plan. We have a plan. Plan, 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 plan. Just say the word plan a lot, and people will think you've got a plan. Alex says, it's insulting for Rain Man to expect to... <laughs> Rain Man. It's insulting for Rain Man to expect teenagers to do national service when he himself refuses to complete a full day of it. He lies to the public, he refuses his duty, and he expects us to just accept it. Have we ever had a Prime Minister as arrogant as he has? Well, let's think about that. Absolutely. Yes, yes we have. In recent memory. Yeah, any thoughts, Bodge? I, I can't comment on that. He's not commenting I, on I, that. Have you seen those little videos he does as uh, an advert for his column in the mail? And he puts them on Twitter. He, he's looking even more disheveled than he used to. I mean, somebody should stage an intervention. I mean, he looks like uh, he, he needs to go on... Um, to uh, like a health farm or something, some somewhere to dry out. <laughs> what, what? I mean, what a catastrophe! How uh, low has Mr. Blobby gone? Ellie says another policy disaster, wanting to give more child benefit to wealthy people. Yeah, didn't um, uh, Jeremy Hunt say that he wanted to extend child benefit to those who earn a hundred and twenty thousand pound a year? What? Yeah, I believe that's true. 120 grand a year. I mean, people who are earning 120 grand a year don't need to uh, get child benefit, do they? Come off it. Nick says the supermarkets have killed farming in this country and other food producers. Have killed farming in this country and other food producers. Maybe the supermarkets have killed farming and other food producers in this country. We need to make we need we need to make up and stop expecting food to be so cheap. Again, you nailed it, says Nick. He says we are to we are to blame. The supermarkets just supply the demand, and we as a nation are um, uh, we the we oh. anyway that <laughs> yeah. We have very cheap food in this country. Even now, after even after the price has been hiked to so much, we have got used to very cheap food in this country. And it might not seem like that to you, but it's true compared with um, you know our our, uh, our, our lovely neighbours. And that's because the supermarkets in this country are particularly good at driving prices down. But, as I said yesterday, what they do is they drive prices down by giving the people who produce the food less and less. And if a gigantic supermarket comes in and says, uh, well, we want you to provide the food for the exact same amount as it costs you to make it, or we won't buy it from you, then what are you going to do? Well, you're either going to give up farming entirely, which a lot of people are doing, apparently, because they can't make no money from it, 
or you're just going to go along with it and just tick along, just ticking over. You know, just um, just barely managing to get from one year to the next. And that's not good for them, and it's not good for the animals, and it's got not good for us. So I think we're going to have to uh, get used to um, paying a little bit more for our food. Well, we have got used to paying a little bit more for uh, our food, and it's not just uh, inflation that uh, is, uh, you know, is the, uh, that is subject, or that other countries are subject to as well. It's our own uh, particular problems that we have in this country. We could have cheaper food, clothing and footwear straight away by getting rid of the protectionist uh, anti-trade tariffs that the EU imposes. And uh, it would be very good for the British people, and it would provide certainty. And I think once there's certainty, the country will begin to reunite. Why does anybody listen to a word that man says? I mean, seriously, how much more evidence do you need? <laughs> Bermondsey, Lavinia Grace. Bermondsey, Lavinia Grace. Too late. Let's have uh, tooting. Hello, Jan. Oh, hi. Good evening. Yes, Nick. Jan. Yeah, it's it's um. You know, I've been well. I've got. I've got. I've got a couple of points. I've got a couple of points to make. A couple of three points, one. yes. But, but it's it's leading in from leading in from, from what you. Were Can you do them saying. in reverse order? Reverse order. Hmm. Now I I I'll come, I'll come up with I just one of my point, but the overall point is to do with there won't be there won't have been another election like this one we're going to have now. What? And I've been I've more, been um, a more boring one. You mean? No, not boring. Well, I, I'm, I'm a bit shocked by some people's response to it. They've, they've become totally apathetic about it. And yes. I'm quite excited to get my polling card. Yeah, I can't wait. How can people be <laughs> bored by this? Good grief. I am itching to go down to the polling booth and secrete myself in that plywood uh, construction. Yeah, so, so um, I, I'm quite put off by this apathy. And I think that's the danger of it all, isn't it? That, that there could be this level of apathy that people... Anyway, the thing if, is... Uh, if the majority <laughs> of the smart people don't go out and vote then we will have the future direction of this country decided for us by cranks yeah it's going to be awful it's going to be awful but but what what worries what what is going to be so new with this election as never before mm. is that the the, I mean, the cheating on this before is that is this is i think what is it this uh the race the, the person of I, itn's chief exec saying we're going to have a flood we're going to be flooded with ai yeah, okay, I've, I've like been saying that then. for ages. There is a tsunami yeah. of misinformation that is coming your way, and the, and, and the likes of which you have never experienced. I mean, the Brexit thing, the the, mm. the, uh, the waves of misinformation that was coming and pouring all over your social media accounts, that was as nothing compared to what is about to happen to us. Yes, yeah, it's a tsunami, isn't it? A tsunami of, of, of everything. I mean, we just want... Because look at how the, the ministers and all the... Uh, Cameron and that thought he was talking to some... Um, the hoax calls to the uh, the highest level, yeah. you know, to mm. Cameron yeah. and that. There's the he, he's supposed to be out. one of the bright ones. I think this is nonsense. Yeah, me yeah, too. Yeah, and he was about to give that they give out information, yeah. but he realised that they wouldn't be asking it. You know, he got suspicious mm. about it. But but then there's there's that. But there's also the the other side of it that that no one's really talking about, and which has come up in the news is to do with the hacking. I mean, it's been in the news a lot, but the latest thing, because it's quite shocking, because it's the, the what is it, the latest hacking that's affected King's College Hospital, um, oh, yeah. um, uh, Tom, mm -hmm. St. Thomas's, yeah. I'm Thomas's. sure that I'm sure that this goes on much more frequently than we are um, alerted to. I think yeah. mostly because where where would a hacker mostly want to get into? A financial <laughs> institution, and if a financial institution admits that it has been hacked, then mm. our confidence in that institution would go through the floor. And we would want our money back from them, <laughs> so they don't tell us. I betcha, betcha, betcha. Nick, Nick, but this, this because these things I'm mentioning resonate with my own experience, but this, this affects, this, this thing has been hacked. They know who did it. It was. It's, this is to do with blood tr transfusion patients. And they've hacked the NHS hospital. They've been hit by yeah. Russian... Well, yes. Vlad the Insaner, I would expect. Yeah. No, they're not saying it's him. They know who it is. It's a group of the Russian well-known hackers from right. the... Well, if, if anybody's like doing anything somewhere. in Russia, I would imagine that he has knowledge of it. Well, no, but the thing is, what it's doing, it's, it's, it's totally disrupted the, the 
um, the, the hospitals. What the, 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 the yeah, thing I understand. Yeah, you pay uh, uh, you pay a ransom, and, and we'll give you your information back. I get it. Yeah. So so what? It's it's um, but it's it's going on all the time. There was millions. I think I came across it recently. There were millions of records from the defence department. You know, it's like it's like what what the none of the none of the parties are talking about how. No, and they didn't talk about the Russia thing either. The Conservative Party didn't to talk about the Russia report. They just uh, pretended that it didn't exist and that Russia had, had nothing to do with um, uh, the Brexit disaster that has been visited upon this country uh, with uh, all of the consequences for our uh, relationship with our close personal friends in Europe, which is to the benefit of Vladimir Putin. And the Tory party, as close as they were to uh, Russia at that time, who knows how close they are now, got no idea. But they certainly were at the time. There was uh, actual clubs within the Conservative Party who were, um, uh, they were called something of the order of let's go kiss a Russian. I might have uh, made, uh, I've exaggerated some of that for a comic effect, but it was uh, there or thereabouts. And if you wanted to uh, meet the minister of your choice, then you had to pay in uh, rubles. And uh, so when the Russia report came out, they pretended it didn't exist. Okay, message coming in from next door. Do not read on air. Go on. <laughs> oh, 0345. Hey, Jan, got to go. Thanks for that. 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. And if you're on Twitter, it's uh, at LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. Nick Abbott. Alexa, send a comment to LBC. <laughs> I just want to tell you all how happy I am to be back in the studio, making a picture again. It's a radio show, dear. Uh, Mary says, I would willingly pay more for tasty, wholesome food. Mmm, mmm. She says, wages are so low is the reason why many people need food to be cheap. Catch-22 situation, says Mary, who doesn't tell us where she shops, but I bet she does not pay willingly more for tasty, wholesome food. I bet uh, Mary goes to a supermarket where the opposite is the case. Liverpool. Hello, Alan. Hello, Nick. Thanks for taking the call. Alan. Nick, uh, my point is, I, I know you like to keep it quick and you get as many calls in as you can. I was diagnosed with cancer in October um, and I'd cashed two pensions in to get a deposit for my house. Now, if I hadn't cashed them pensions in, I've had two payments of £180 in eight months off the government's ESA, PIP, whatever you want to call it. And all I'm saying, I've got nothing against people trying to migrate from countries where they're affected. But what's in place for us? I've had to spend twenty thousand pounds to survive, and they're giving people three thousand pounds to get on the plane. People who've never contributed to our society. Does that make sense? Uh, you're conflating two different uh, things, Alan. We're the sixth richest country in the world, as we keep being told over and over and over again, helping you and um, helping some poor, desperate person who's fleeing a war or whatever it is. Uh, it, one does not cancel out the other. We can surely do both. All we have to do is uh, not waste hundreds of billions of pounds on HS2 and uh, PPE. That doesn't work. And £40 billion pounds on a telephone app for test and trace. Contract taste, contact tasting, t testing, tracing, forgive me, contract, contract, contact tracing. Yeah, or uh, uh, words to that effect. Give it up, Bodge, you're never going to get it. But I wish you all the best, Alan, thanks for that. Sarah says, I have never wished to discuss politics more in my life and it is my l least favourite subject. <laughs> yes, that's right, you're almost forced to, aren't you? I mean, some of the details are just so delicious. I have never wished to discuss politics more in my life, and it's my least favourite subject, says Sarah. Hands up who can't wait till the 4th of July. I'm going to vote twice. L uh, Bermondsey, Lavinia Grace. Oh, hi, my lovely. Yes, Lavinia. What happened? What happened earlier? Oh, I don't I know. About... I, I came to your line and you weren't there. Spooky. But I was there, my lovely. I was there. Well, I was here, so that's odd. And I was here. <laughs> it doesn't matter. All I'm going to say, Nick, is mm -hmm. that... You know this thing about uh, Penny Mug... Is it Penny Mugnut? What's her name? Pen Penny, Penny Mugnut, yes. Yeah, Penny Mugna. You know that um, <laughs> you debate they had on the Friday? Yeah, the shouting fest. Yeah. yeah. Well, 
obviously, you know, I never watched it because I had an idea, you know, what was going to happen. It was going to be a disaster anyway. Yeah. Okay. Mm. But what I want to say is that I actually uh, saw a picture of her and uh, the other lady. Yeah. But uh, what I did notice uh, uh, the day after on that picture was uh, Penny Mugner Penny was Mugner. actually pointing her finger at to the other lady. Angela, no, Angela, thought, Angela Rayburst. Mm -hmm. Yes, whatever her name is. I yeah. mean, I don't even know her name, right? No. But all I'm who are, say, who I are these look, people? Exactly. But what I want to say, <laughs> Nick, right, listen to me. I please, am listening to you. Because I'm so concerned about what's uh, going on. Well, right? I, feel, I feel <clears> your pain. Go ahead. Thank you. Unburden thank you. Your, thank you. Unburden yourself. Hold on, hold on. I hold am on, holding. Mate. Right, but... Do you know what, Nick? When I saw that, I thought, that says it all, yes. OK? Mm. She was pointing her finger at the picture. Who and was? I thought... Who, who was pointing? Uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Penny Mugner. Penny right? Mugner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was pointing... What example are they setting for anybody out there? What example? But what uh, I want to say, mm -hmm. what the people need, what we all need, is inspiration. I thought right. that what we need is uh, love, sweet love. It's the only that thing. As well, sing. That as just, well. Just what the world too little love. needs love. Yeah. Is love, sweet love. Oh, I'm sorry, we've run out of time on that call. That is disappointing. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Mark says. Sunak has taken on a shocking situation and what he has done has got some good people in cabinet positions and I feel that if he had more time that things would improve. Shall I read that again? No. Sunak has taken on a shocking situation and what he has done has got some good people in cabinet positions and I feel that if he had more time that things would improve. Which good people in cabinet positions? Name them, Mark. I double dare you. He says, I think one question to all parties is back to basics. How would they ensure food security and how would they support our great British farmers that produce the highest welfare, best quality in the world? Says Mark, with no evidence to back that up. Our great British farmers produce the highest welfare and best quality in the world. Based on what? That they're British? Everything that British people do is the best of its kind on Earth because we're British, damn it. Or words to that effect. Coral texts. Just to put a positive spin on the Conservatives and uh, Titchy shenanigans, I've never laughed so much during a campaign. Well, no, it has been amusing. Yeah, appreciate it, Titchy. Thank you. Yeah, you're doing a great job. Coral says, he is hilarious, and I rather suspect his next career will be as a comedian. I really laugh so much at his inane and desperate communication. Free fun at last, says Coral. <laughs> it's, there's nothing free about it, Coral. It's costing us a blooming fortune. Are you kidding? <laughs> uh, Maurice says, Liz Truss, here today, gone tomorrow. That's it. That's all. That's That's it. Am I missing something there? Here today, gone tomorrow. I'm, I'm not very clear about what you mean, Maurice. I'm genuinely unclear. Even the Lizbot has no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> She's standing to be an MP again. I am stunned. I mean, I genuinely am. I'm, I'm almost borderline thinking about not actually doing yet or uh, considering it strongly. But I'm just um, contemplating a while staying up on July the 4th, staying up that night, just to see on the, the looks on certain individuals' faces as the results come in. Because there's, um, I'm making a list. There's at least six people that I want to have a close-up on their faces as the results are read. But as the results, uh, they, they start coming in at about sort of three o'clock in the morning, don't they? I can't stay up that late. But then when you wake up the next day, it's all done and dusted. And you just get it all in one go. I, I would like it dribbled out. I'd like the deliciousness dribbled out slowly. <laughs> like, some, like some sort of, uh, like, you know, like, a, like a, a wonderful torture like that. Maybe I could put the 
the recording uh, button on. What, what do you call I mean, I would say tape, but that's just because it used to be a tape. I'd record the overnight feed on, uh, you know, one of the channels and then play it when I get up without seeing what the result is. So I'm, you know, like six hours behind. Because if they start coming in at three, then if I get up at sort of ten in the morning, I start listening, uh, I start watching it at three, then by, um, I mean, by ten, it's all done, isn't it? So that's uh, seven hours. That's a plan, isn't it? But you'd have to be very strict with yourself not to fast forward. I can't wait. I'm actually genuinely excited. For the first time ever in my life, I am genuinely excited about an, uh, an election day. Who's with me? Lee text, the last four years have shown that everyone... Have shown every... <laughs> Lee text, the last four years have shown everyone that none of the two main parties are any different. Neither, maybe. Yes, maybe in words, but not in practice, says uh, Lee who, um, <laughs> he knows the best words. I'm very highly educated. <laughs> I know words. I have the best words. Lee has the best words. Any fool know that. Sam says, personally, I am looking forward to the manifestos being published. Are you? He says, I want to make an educated choice come the election. So far, I'm leaning towards voting Lib Dem, says Sam. No, you don't. No one reads the manifestos. You know how many uh, pages the, uh, man I think, the, was it Jeremy Corbyn's manifesto? It had uh, something over, it was about over a hundred pages. What? No one read that. No one. Which is why I was making a big deal about uh, the appearance of the individuals on that debate. Which is exactly what cartoonists, political cartoonists do. They exaggerate um, the, their uh, appearance for comic effect. Which is what I was doing. But weirdly, you're not allowed to do it, in certain people's minds, by speech. But you can do it by drawing it down, by, you know, uh, making a cartoon of it. That's perfectly okay. You just can't say, you just can't describe it. Which is something else I just don't understand. I think it's that whole, um, you know, like a footballer can't make a comment about politics. Whoa, stick to doing football. That, that nonsense. Whereas absolutely everybody who is not a footballer has an opinion about football. Well, stick to plumbing, mate. <laughs> what do you know about about um, uh, the uh, defensive line at Manchester United? <laughs> Sam says, personally, I am looking forward to... No, I've read that one already. He's still looking forward to the manifestos being published. Any time now, Sam. This text says, imagine having the cheek and audacity to have children while you live and work and pay taxes in the UK. Yeah, we're in big trouble in this country. And it's not just this country, it's the West in general. People aren't having enough babies. Yeah, there was this uh, thing that I um, read. Uh, one moment, please. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, I can't find it. Anyway, it was a, uh, <coughs> a chart that said... Um, for quite some time now, we have been uh, not producing enough babies in this country. I mean, Japan is uh, is an extreme example of this. That's a very, very aging society. I don't know what they're going to do. Um, but in, in this country, we have only uh, been able to sort of keep the population ticking over to keep it enough people economically active, as opposed to just uh, a, um, uh, being a, a nation of um, old crones by dint of immigration. If it wasn't for immigration, there wouldn't be anybody to uh, wipe up after us. Which, which should, by the way, give you pause for thought if you're one of those people that believes the uh, outpourings of uh, certain individuals. About how they come over here, they take our jobs, they take the jobs that we don't want to do. And if they didn't take those jobs that we don't want to do, those jobs wouldn't get done. And there's no point saying, that, oh, well, we'll, uh, we'll train up British people to do them. In the entire history of this country, British people have not done certain jobs. And neither are they going to start doing them now. Because we're doing other jobs. But you can't tell people that. Uh, so uh, what's the point in even trying? David Tech, Sunak is trying to guarantee Tory loss. Well, 
I've been thinking um, along those lines. If he is doing that, then he's playing a pretty good game because he's making it seem as though he's trying while, <laughs> whilst failing spectacularly at every turn. So if he's actually trying to lose, he's, uh, he's covering up that desire pretty well. The other thing is that uh, the place is in such a state, absolutely nothing works. Name one single thing, and I, you know, I've, I've tried that so many times on this show. Name one thing that's better now than it was 14 years ago. Name one thing that actually works in this country. I bet you can't. That absolutely nothing works in this country. We're totally flat broke, and everything is about to get much worse. Why would a, a the party that is uh, primarily responsible for that want to have to stick around and, and wipe up the mess? Much better to put their feet up and smoke a cigar and roll around in uh, piles of money for uh, five years and let the Labour Party um, <laughs> stress itself out, sweating bullets, trying to put the country back together again. So, yeah, highly suspicious. On your radio, on Global Player and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Thank you for hope. Your cause and point. Oh, hello. 0345 6060 973. Thank you for holding, Paul. Your call is important to us. You're in Swansea. Yes, Paul. Oh, oh hi, uh, Mr. Abbott. Yes, Paul. I'd just like to uh, comment on uh, how difficult it is to um, say you suddenly made redundant approach the job centre and uh, have them assist you in finding work. Um, in a sense, oh, I'll give you a strange example. If I was to phone up, they give me a number at the job centre, phone up this and you'll make an appointment with the job centre and uh, we'll see you there and discuss your position. Now, in order to phone up your automated phone yeah. and for them to gather your data, uh, my pronunciation of English has to be better than the BBC. If it had a kind of like Welsh twang to it, the answering phone taking my data, like name, address, date of birth, gets it wrong all the time, I feel. Oh, you, you, mean, you, you, mean, you mean you're talking to a robot? Affirmative. Yeah, you, you start off to make an appointment with the job centre, they give you a telephone number. You have to hand speak your uh, details. Yeah, to a robot. And it, not a yeah, real person. A robot, yeah. yeah, yeah, to a robot, not a real person, right? And if you don't get the English, you have to practice your elocution, like uh, speak exactly properly, yeah. in order for them to get you right details. The Rhine yeah. in spine, exactly. like that. Exactly. And if you don't know that, it just it just it doesn't work. So that's, that's before you get an appointment with the job centre. Like hmm. So, then, what kind of work are you after? Oh, I, I do um, writing or mu uh, musical performance, like um, uh, folk singing and uh, <laughs> or sales, say sales, for example. Wow. A any, kind, any kind of job, really. Nothing, nothing special, just what, what's in the locality. Well, and, and, um, and one of the things you want to do is folk singing? Well, I, I do a bit in the open. Open, open mic. You have, you have uh, right. taverns. In but you mic, wouldn't you know. expect the job centre to furnish you with a folk singing position. Well, no, no but see, take lighting, for example, right? Lighting? Um, you mean you're an electrician? No, journalism. Oh, so writing, writing. Writing. Right, right. Oh, okay. okay, got it. Well, they, they aren't going to help you with that, neither. Well, you, no, but what happens is they give you, um, um, they say, okay, we'll offer you some benefit if you kind of like seek for work online for 35 hours a week. Fair enough, okay. But no one, no one the... on earth is going to look online for 35 hours a week for a job. I mean, I, I just can't imagine that that would ever happen. Well, that's the terms and conditions of getting some rent to, 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 to live in that. Right. In, in, but, but, they kind of like, but then they say, but you can't have access to our computers and we don't know why. They don't give a reason, like, oh, it's, it's like... What um, do you mean, access to their computers? You mean you well, want to use them? The job centre got loads of computers in right. their... Um, okay. 
but it, it, they, and they, they won't say, let you use them. Why not? They don't. They, don't, they haven't said like you know. They said it's just a decision was made um, a while ago, but they don't say why. Like well, no. is there a uh, library near your uh, right? Manor? So you go you go to the library and you get two hours. Uh, uh, um, so two hours a day on the library. So you get kind of like uh, that's two job applications, but um, it's, it's it's kind of like. Um, they have to fill in the journal. Fair enough to say how you're looking for work, but it, it's it's um, say so for example, um, it can be very complicated in arranging. I had a strange experience where I had to go down to the library, sign on the library, get back to the job centre, give them a number, then go back to the library about half an hour's walk away, type in an, another number to make a connection to get a. You know, it's, it's, it seems it's really kind of um, complicated, like you know. It's, yeah, it's, I, I, it sounds but, very. But, it, it sounds but labyrinthine the way you're explaining right. it to, to me, Paul. Okay, Paul, w- could you could you do a job that's not writing and not folk singing? Is there anything else that is in your uh, canon of abilities? Well, yes, it's sales. I could Sales. sales. Well, there must be no end of sales jobs uh, uh, up your uh, way. I mean, uh, Swansea. That's where they put all the call centres, isn't it? Well, fine. That's that's, that's all. It, uh, competition. Yeah, apply for sales job. That, that's that's that, that's no problem. That, that's, and that's good in a sense because they teach you IT skills by saying go online and apply for them. You, you made to go on to online job centres like you know, Indeed, Total, or Reach, and apply for work that way. And that's great. It's just um. How long have you been looking for work? Uh. Well, since we come out of lockdown in the area, you know, um, since COVID-19. Two years. Well, uh, during COVID, I was following the story, doing a lot of writing, kind of like non-paid writing. Right, that's, that's, not, that's not work. That's a hobby. Yeah, voluntary work, kind of. It's a hobby, if you like. Right. Yeah, so, yeah, for a couple of years, it's just, um, it's slowly opening up, and uh, it's just, um, it's, it's, it's uh, a lot of competition for, for work, so I'm getting on a bit, I suppose. Right. How, 58. 58. You're 58. So, right. So okay. Getting, well, you're in. Uh, yes. Well, you're in a difficult position there, Paul, and it's uh, beyond my ability to uh, help you. But um, thanks for. No, it's uh, a complicated nature because a lot of people. I mean, a lot of who are on planet Earth. Think new, from Newcastle to Liverpool yeah, down South Wales. Just, just trying to speak. extricate myself from <laughs> this call. You speak. pulled me back in, Paul. Hey, I've, got, I've got to go, but I wish you all the best. Yes. All right. Thanks a lot, mate. 0345-6060-973. George says, How confident are you that Tishy will still find a way of cancelling the election due to national security reasons? He will cancel it for our safety. There will be a, a message coming through on your phone that says... Emergency, everybody to get from street. Emergency, everybody to get from street. Yeah, July the 4th. Watch for it on your mobile. Milton Keynes, hello George. Hello there, Nick, how are you doing? Good, thanks. Uh, first thing I'd like to say is I commiserate deeply with Paul, the previous caller. I too am facing a consultation meeting on Monday regarding future employment. Our company is going to lose one in six of the members of our department, which is not great news. Blimey. Second piece of information, Jan from Tooting. Yes. The best giggle on radio. I tune in every weekend just to hear Jan giggle from tooting. And the third piece of information... Yes. ...is regarding your... Keep saying that Rishi Sunak has never known any sort of failure in his life. Mm -hmm. And it's only two years ago that he was beaten by Liz Truss. Oh, that's right. Absolutely. Yeah, the Truss Do you not remember that, Nick? Yes, I do, yeah. I mean, that was crushing for him, surely. Well, it, it may inform why he is driving his party into a tree. His tree, I mean, it seems as though he's trying to lose the next election from an outsider. I mean, I've no affiliation to either side, but if I was a Conservative supporter, yeah. I'd be seriously, deeply worried and concerned. I'd be beside about myself. The fact that the current Prime Minister is doing everything he can to lose as badly as possible <laughs> in the next election. I, yeah, I, that thought has crossed my mind, but I, I find it hard to believe that somebody would make such an effort to appear to be trying and put himself through so much ridicule. Who's as, advising him? Well, I've got no idea. How much are they getting paid? Uh, they should be paying him. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but Jan from Tooting for me is the best. All right. Okay. Thanks a lot, George. 
0345 Mark says, I think the reason Titchy had to leave France in such a hurry was to load the dishwasher and make the bed. <laughs> yeah, right, because that's what he does. He loads the dishwasher and makes the bed. Yeah, anybody believe that? No. No, me neither. <laughs> it's his job to remind one of his people to load the dishwasher and make the bed. Marie, Martine, rather, says, My vote goes to Nige. His gorgeous face and beautiful smile melts my heart. <laughs> he may be an egotistic, deceitful ignoramus, but we can't have everything, says, <laughs> says Martine. <laughs> uh, 0345-6060-973. Let's have uh, Camden. Hello, Max. Oh, hi, gosh. That was great. Hi there. Hi, Nick. Um, oh, I just pulled you well, up at random. You haven't been waiting that long. That is right. Can I put you back on hold? No, so All I was right shocked then. getting the okay. response, but uh, lovely to talk to you. Um, it was simply about just to sort of quickly do a brief analysis of Nigel Farage after last night. Yeah. And um, I found myself thinking, I'm, I love you. <laughs> Who, me or him? I didn't at all. But I found myself being drawn into his confidence, and I wanted to analyse why I do that thing, as he's so, as he said himself, revolting all the time. And, Nigel Farage um, calls himself revolting. I don't think well, so. Well, he was last night. He kept saying that he was going to revolt, oh. and we should all revolt. Right, that's so not he what... Is revolting. Right. Yeah, but that's not you know, what he, he meant. Go on. He represents revolting. Um, well, he, his shtick is, and um, his party's thing, is that they're anti-elite, which is just comical. He is the son of a stockbroker. I he know. He went to a private school know, and then was a trader in the city. I know. His, his friends, if they aren't millionaires, are billionaires. What I is know. he talking he about? Exactly. And this is what I wanted to try and sort of, as I say, drill down on, to just work out what he's about. And I think he's just, he has got a chip, let's face it, or a sort of bucket of chips on his shoulder. And he loves dissembling things like he did with the EU and saying, you know, who's laughing now? He's that kind of personality. Um, but the flip side of his personality, to get to the stage where he can say, you know, um, I, with a smirk, I'm better than you, he uses this kind of salesman tactics. But my, my question is, do you think he's going to get anywhere, or do you think hopefully people can kind of see through all that at the end of the day? Well, the, the thing point. is, I mean, our screwed up uh, political voting system in this country will probably um, mean that he won't uh, win, and neither will any other um, candidate from the Reform Party yeah. win, and neither will the Greenies get anywhere, and the Lib Dems probably won't do much. So it's the, it's the two main parties. If we actually had proportional representation, then yes, there would be, uh, you know, the, he, he, he would have a, a seat at the table, but we don't, so he won't. Sure. Do you think he will get his comeuppance? That's the other thought I had. Uh, well, let, would... well, let me ask you this. Will Donald Trump get his comeuppance? It's all in the sequel. We shall see. Yeah. Uh, I, but I seriously doubt it on both counts. All right. Th <laughs> thanks a lot, Mike. 0345-6060-973. Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott, LBC. LBC. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. This is absolute tosh. Thanks, Nigel. You're the best. Sue says, I'm beginning to think that the Prime Minister's recent behaviour can be down to a last-ditch attempt to resuscitate his ratings in the polls by adopting Donald Trump's methodology. I.e., there is no limit on how badly you behave. <laughs> how, how stupid you sound. Don't be rude. And how much undiluted twaddle you speak, or how many lies you tell. Everything that I've done is 100% proper. That's what I do as I do things proper. In fact, the worse your behavior, the more popular you become. The question is, will this actually work for Rishi? Um, no, because he doesn't have the, uh, he doesn't have the charisma. He hasn't got the charisma of a Donald Trump, and he hasn't got the charisma of a Nigel Farage, so he can't get away with as much as they would be able to. 
because that's the thing about those two uh, people. They're less politicians and more show business types. They put on a show. And there's a certain number of people who are, um, you know, are, uh, are not immune to their charms. <laughs> Phil says, Uncle Nige said we need some form of proportional representation in a debate yesterday. Sadly, a stop clock is right twice a day. Yeah, I think we just covered that, didn't we? Just covered it. 0345 606 0973. Doncaster, Maria. Oh, hang on a minute. Maria. No, I'm still here. Yes, Maria. Oh, I did. I, I wasn't given any warning. What? <laughs> I wasn't given any warning. That you weren't I was given any be warning. On. Warning, warning. There you go. No warnings. <laughs> I think no matter who gets in, we're all going to hell in a handcart. Yes. I think it's it's all done, and I I, I think we need a brave new world. What the book? No, I just think we need a new world. I don't know what it is or what fashion it's going to take. Mm -hmm. We we just need to go forward somehow. And I have no idea what shape that will take. Well, it has to be world-shaped. We can't leave this world and go to another. There is no planet B. So we I must know, organise this world to our satisfaction first before yeah. leaving it and going to somewhere else. I agree, Nick. I absolutely agree. But where would we go? I mean, I agree with Jan. She's out there with the birds. That's easy, isn't it? Being out there with the birds. I, I've had some, some lovely, um, you know, birds in my garden today. But I'm not going to bore you with that. Uh, too late. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I had a, uh, I had a, a, a red breast and um, one of them black and white birds. What are they called? Ravens, or not ravens, uh, the black and white uh, ones. Magpies. 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 Yeah, that's right. They're magpies, the ones. Yeah. <laughs> Squawking at me from uh, a tree, just too far away to actually, you know, do anything about them. You, I know. You, you can clap your hands, but they just keep squawking anyway. Well, they love the shiny things. If any shiny things, you keep, keep them away from the magpies because yeah, they, well, they come down. I haven't got any shiny I'll things, get them. Maria. I can only dream of being the possessor of a shiny thing. <laughs> well, I wish you all the best. And you. And, uh, and keep going and, and keeping us going. Well, there's, there's nothing else for it. Show. Thanks, Maria. There's nothing for it but to keep going. What else are we going to do? Thanks for that. Cheers, my dear. 0345. 6060973. Martin says, In the past two weeks, Fishy has managed to act out four seasons of The Thick of It in real life. All that's missing is a Malcolm Tucker. Yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about because I've never, never seen that show. Um, Alex says, It's insulting. No, that's the Rain Man thing. Read that one. Sarah says, let's go back to square one as soon as possible. We have a plan, 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 plan and plan, plan and plan, plan, or you just go back to square one. As soon as possible, according to Sarah. Can't wait to get there. She's even prepared to uh, pass go without collecting £200. Can you believe that? <laughs> Wants to go uh, back to square one. She's itching. Merthyr Tidfield. Hello, Jeff. Hey, Nick. Um... What did you think of the old uh, debate then? Um, I, I I was pretty impressed with the uh, couple of guys on it. Well, I'm I made some notes. Yeah. Uh, mostly it was about how they looked. <laughs> 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 um, but uh, you know, certain individuals did say uh, certain things that made me uh, write it down on a piece of paper. How do yep. you pronounce that guy's name? Green up your. Right, well, that's just impossible. <laughs> Can I call him Dave? <laughs> call him what you like. Look, um, I was pretty impressed with the Scotsman. He, he yes. actually called Nigel Farage an oil, a snake oil. A snake oil salesman. salesman, yeah. Yeah, and he mentioned Brexit. He was the guy that got two rounds of applause yeah. but nobody else got it. Mm. So, to be fair to them, I thought they did very well. Um, the uh, Reen and um, Dave Q, whatever, yeah. and uh, the Scotsman. So, the thing is, uh, of the of the, of the the whole thing, mm -hmm. I was reminded at the end of it of Socrates. And well, who, who wasn't, Jeff? Let's, let's be honest. <laughs> 
The point being that uh, Socrates caused a lot of points, but like you, you know, talking about, you know, proportional representation, mm-hmm. that sort of stuff. Yeah, me, Socrates, were like that. Uh, yep. Well, he said at the beginning, right there to the Athenian authorities, this democracy business is a load of rubbish. It's not going to work. Why? Because the vast majority of the people who are voting are thick and they haven't got the intelligence to do it. The masses are asses. Don't forget that. Exactly. That's why Nigel Farage comes on. He's absolutely trashed by these two guys. And then you turn around, he smiles, he just laughs, he laughs it all Mm -hmm. off, and then you look at the the reform party is making ground everywhere. Yeah. Because I, I, they have I, I, because they have uh, supposedly simple solutions to complicated problems and people don't want complication they want simplicity. That's why Boris Johnson got elected for three words. Get Brexit done. People don't yep. want to think too much about it. They just want to be co- comforted by the by the information that the problems in their lives can be solved easily. And the, and that and uh, those lies work, work every time. Yep, very true. With a certain number uh, of people. Yep, and the pro- the problem is that uh, they. I mean, look, let's let's face the reality of it. Labour's going to walk this one. Okay, fair enough. They're going to walk it because they want the Tories out, and everywhere in the UK that'll that'll be the story. But when you get down to it. Are the Labour Party going to change anything? You know, it's a hard, it's a hard sell. I, I'm not, I'm not convinced. Sorry about that, but they're going to get in, and let's hope for the best. You yeah. know. Well, if you're expecting them to change something quickly within uh, within a week or a month or a year or even three years, then you're going to be so, so, sorely disappointed. It's going to take a long time to turn this ship around. But yeah. I do believe that. And I'll do the parallel lines thing again. If you think that there is no difference between them, then the Tories and the Labour Party are parallel lines that will never deviate. They will never get further apart forever. But that's not true. There is a difference between them, however small you think it might be. And over Mm. a long period of time, that difference will become enormous if you think of parallel lines just deviating by one degree. Dude, this is an intellectual conversation. Yeah, wow, well, you did call Socrates, didn't you? <laughs> I did, indeed. Oh. I didn't expect this. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, you're lucky to have not got the Spanish Inquisition. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Cheers, mate. 0345 973 There was so much that was said on um, Friday night that I, I don't know whether it got fact-checked or not, but um, Nigel Farage said he was talking about the cost of living. He says that uh, energy in this country is too expensive because of the money that we give to uh, the people who run wind farms. Yeah, it's essentially, what would Donald Trump say? I know a lot about wind. I know a lot about wind. And it's completely incorrect in every respect. Fossil fuel producers have been given £20 billion more in support from the government, as in you, than renewables since 2015. 20 billion pounds more. And a fifth of the 80 billion pounds given by you through the government to fossil fuel producers was supporting new extraction. That's a little known um, uh, fact about fuel. I think it's uh, over, I can't remember what period of time, so I'll make it up. Over the past uh, decade, let's say, we, we, you, in, through your taxes, via the government, have given fossil fuel producers more in subsidies than they've paid in taxes. £80 billion. Pounds. And he's going on about uh, fo- that uh, energy is too expensive because of the money we give to wind farms. And when people say that, you have to think, where is their funding coming from? That's what I think. 0345 6060 973. Tony says Penny Mordant or Penny, or Penny Mugnuts. <laughs> she, she, she is now to be known on this show because of her recent caller. Penny Mugnuts, whoever she is, 
says a vote for reform is a vote to allow Labour to reverse the outcome of the EU referendum. I never thought I'd say this, but can I cast my vote for reform in blood, please, says Tony. Yeah, well, uh, Kenny uh, Bad Enoch was saying uh, that exact same thing. And I have detailed files. She said a vote for reform will let Labour and Labour in and allow Keir Starmer to reverse Brexit and strengthen militant trade un militant trade unions. No! <laughs> militant. Uh, so I'll get to that in a while. There's plenty of time. Don't you worry about that. Uh, Daryl says, I don't understand why everybody has been so critical. I mean, what could be more exciting than a seven-way mass debate? James says, why should my kids do a year's national service when Rishi Sunak can't even manage to do one day's national service? That's not fair. Doing national service is Rishi Sunak's top priority. Under my leadership, the government's priorities are your priorities. The people's priorities. It's the people's priorities. Quite patriotic, no? No. No. Stirring. 0345 6060 973. You can text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. And if you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. By the way, we do put the Friday and Saturday night shows up the internet as a podcast. Oh, yeah. It's available on Global Player. If you don't have Global Player, it's free. Get it from your app store or globalplayer.com. If you have one of them stupid smart speakers, the magic phrase is play Nick Abbott the whole show podcast. And we do that because, uh, you know, as time ticks on, I can't expect you to stay up uh, all night long. But if you want to listen to the rest of this uh, super show, then it is available on the internet as a podcast. If you've got a stupid smart speaker, say, play Nick Abbott the whole show podcast. Uh, the idea is that we take the news and uh, most of the ads out. Mostly. So it takes less time to listen to, which will give you more opportunity to contemplate the wonder that is Rishi. 11.30 on LBC, the news headlines with Tim Daly. Leading Britain's conversation, Nick Abbott. Alexa, send a comment to LBC. Okie dokie. 0345 6060 973. Rose texts, well, when their appearance is so dramatic, of course we will talk about it talking about the uh, the mass debate the other night. Yes, people were um, uh, uh, presented themselves in a very dramatic way. You bet they did. Trying to catch our attention. Adrian says, it's not just cash that we need to keep. TV providers are pushing streaming television. No, no and no. We need to be able to record with a hard drive recorder. Internet falls over and there's no TV with streaming only. Then what are you going to do? Stare at a massive blank screen. That is correct. Yeah. Don't rely on the internet because the internet will fall over at, at the moment at which it is least convenient for it to do so. Anne says, I agree that internet banking will backfire. I, d I don't think I ever said that, did I? <laughs> I, th I just uh, said uh, that we can't allow cash to disappear because when the cash, um, when the um, credit card payment facility closes down or uh, is uh, broken as it uh, does do frequently or as it happened to me the other day as the the uh, credit card uh, machine the bloke hadn't charged it up so I'm standing there on the street by a, a black cab driver and like it's my fault that I can't pay him I can't just walk away because uh, he was a particularly shouty person <laughs> and so I just had to stand there while he was uh, just gawping at this lifeless machine that he had failed to charge up. But you know me, I never complain. Whinging and whining and moaning. 0345 6060 973. Let's see now, who's been waiting the longest? Be totally fair about this. Mm -hmm. Northwich. Dominic. Oh, uh, hi, Nick. Dominic. Yeah, I've got a theory on um, why Rishi Sunak is trying to... Uh lose the election as badly as he possibly can. Yeah. Which is that maybe he's got a spread bet on it. <laughs> so every single seat that gets knocked off yeah. increases his payout. An so, another £100 million. Pounds. 
Yeah, so yeah. If, if, if he can get it down, to my calculation is if he's put like a million pounds per seat, mm. then, you know, if you can get it down to 200 seats, he'll cash in like 100 million. Yeah. If you can get it down to 100 seats, he'll get 200 million. Right. If you can get it down to 50, he'll get 250 million. Yeah, well, that makes as much sense as anything else I've heard this year. Yeah, well, it's, I, I think I think he's uh, his prime motivation in life appears to be well, just cash acquiring money. I think that is a disease that affects those who have a lot of money. The only thing they're interested in is acquiring more of it. They have, an, they, I mean, people like him have enough money for ten lifetimes. Ten lifetimes of doing nothing but shopping, and yet it's still not enough. They do everything they can in order to increase their pile and as much as they possibly can to um, obviate the need to actually, you know, pay taxes. Yeah, well, I mean, he, he's got a history of it, hasn't he? So, uh, you know, yeah. back in uh, 2008, um, when I think he might have helped a few banks to... He precipitated the, uh, the, the, uh, the financial crash of 2007 and eight. Yes, yeah. he, was, he was right there in among it. And the end result was he walked away with lots of cash. A uh, hundred million pounds. There or yeah. thereabouts. Yeah, that's what and, they shared out between them. And then, and then what did he do a few years later? He supported Brexit. And I think you'll find that in the last rich list um, uh, rating, mm -hmm. his, his, uh, his money went up, what, by another... Hundred million pounds, is it? Over the so, last yeah. ten years or so, the super rich, the zero point zero one percent, have increased the value of their assets um, by an unbelievably huge amount. I can't remember what the exact figure is, so I'll make it up: a bazillion percent. Can you believe that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, I'm sure at the end of the election on the fifth of July or sixth yeah. of July or whatever, mm -hmm. I think you'll find that uh, uh, the Conservative Party will be completely crushed, and um, Rishi Sunak will walk away with a very large amount of cash. Uh, While well, Rishi Sunak, his he, he will have already had the removal people take all of his stuff out. There won't be anything left in uh, Number Ten. None of his. Uh, uh, his effects and possessions will still be there, and he'll be mid-flight, I bet you. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, don't tell anyone, though. Don't tell no, the, that's the, right. the, the spread bank company top, that, top that they could be doing that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? All right. That, that, uh, that call was just for amusement's sake. Nobody's actually accusing anybody of doing anything. We're just joking, you know, having a laugh. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Dominic. Uh, Rona says, uh, we didn't watch the debate because we were otherwise engaged. We were watching Mad Max. Well, which one, Rona? Will says, Nigel Farage wants proper traditional British barbers who not only can cut your hair, but can also attempt to remove your appendix if you, <laughs> if you don't have health insurance. <laughs> yeah, that was another thing that he said that wasn't true. He, he was uh, going on and on about, uh, let me see now, I have detailed phrase, or I, I thought I did. Uh, where is it? He was going on about the uh, uh, the NHS and how we pay as much as the French do and get a, a worse result. And that's not true. The uh, In US dollar terms, the UK per person spends $5,492. The French, on the other hand, spend 6516 which is, <coughs> excuse me, 20% more than we do. So no wonder their uh, system is better, because they spend 20% more. And, and the UK figure includes all of that uh, useless PPE that we uh, spent uh, hundreds of millions of pounds on. And the test and trace, you know, all that failure. So the, the, uh, the figure is um, somewhat flattering of our system. So we pay, like, virtually nothing at all compared to our major competitors. So that wasn't true either. But, you know, coming out of it, I thought that he won that debate. Or that people would think more posit positively of him than anybody else on that stage. Just because he didn't really say very much, and he restricted himself to uh, insults and simple answers. And that's what people are after. We don't want to be, uh, we don't want to have, uh, be scratching our heads looking at um, spreadsheets and all the rest of it. We just want the delusion 
that simple answers can solve complicated problems. And he is the kind of person that would, uh, that would persuade us that that is true. In that respect, he, is, not Boris Johnson, but he, Nigel Farage, is Britain Trump, as, <laughs> as, as Trump used to say. Britain Trump. Yeah, he knows words, he has the best words. Any fool know that. 0345 6060 973. Taunton. Hello, John. Oh, hi, Nick. Um, yeah, thanks uh, for taking the call. Um, listening to you just then about Farage, and I was just thinking, if anyone could convince the British public to go back into the European Union, it would be Farage. Oh, well, absolutely nothing that he has, or, or any of the other uh, architects of Brexit have promised, have come true. So, you know, why not? Just, exactly. When he's talking about the French system for health, I was watching it and I was thinking... What? <laughs> I was thinking he's actually telling us that the Europeans are doing something <laughs> better than we are. Right. <laughs> and yeah. then I was thinking this guy could sell sand to the Arabs. But also, I do think there's lots of grounds to be optimistic about the future. Really? Uh, yes, I'm thinking about the, the Prime Minister after next, perhaps. After next? Um, the Prime Minister after... I don't know, um, because we've had a uh, Boris Johnson, haven't we? Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Where, 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 where do we... Like, I, I, I saw uh, something on Facebook, I don't do Facebook, but it's somebody else's Facebook page, and it's someone, somebody saying a few years back, he might be an idiot, but he's our idiot. <laughs> and we're, I just... We're not, we're not talking about uh, Gavin Williamson, are we? Because I, 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 I believe that he is, uh, you know, up for um, election. <laughs> well, exactly, he could take the place. The problem the Tories have got with Sunak is the, the British public don't see him as their idiot. They just see him as an idiot. And the problem with Sunak as well is, I think he's got acid for blood. And I, <laughs> What, like the alien monster? <laughs> I think so, yeah. Especially after the last few days, the D-Day thing and all that. I think what he decided to do was, he decided to follow Churchill, but he got it slightly wrong. Yes. He, he left them on the beach. Yeah, exactly right, yeah. He left them on the beaches, and now he's decided to take off and nuke the whole site from out of space. <laughs> well, it's the only way to be sure. That's right. That, that's correct. And and uh, after um, uh, after Sunak, we're left with a woman who was cosplaying Margaret Thatcher the other day. Mm -hmm. But also, I was thinking, even as I was watching her, with the big hair and all of that. Yes. Uh, well, I didn't have the big hair. She did. She did, yeah. That's right. And I was thinking about Margaret Thatcher on Spitting Image in the 80s, the way they had her dressed as a man. With yeah. a suit on and the cigar, the Churchillian thing and all mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And, um, sorry, I've got no idea where I'm going this. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. I was thinking... Do you uh, know where yeah. you're going to? Go on. <laughs> and I was thinking, Penny Mordaunt, she's like Margaret Thatcher in drag. <laughs> but you mean she's like the Margaret Thatcher spitting image clown in drag, right? That that's yeah. what I was thinking. Well, that's, that's what, what I was thinking. thinking. Right. And then, yes. and then I, I googled the name Mordant. Yes, and it's it's very disturbing. Is this? Yes, uh, the, the different meanings of the word Mordant. You got acid. Mordant. So the old, whole acid for blood thing again, or maybe blood for acid. You've got murd, murder. You've got um, all kinds of things that are not very nice. And uh, so if um, if um, what's his name, so Keir Starmer messes it up. Mm. And, and then Mordant gets in, we are, we, we, we've had it. We're doomed, yeah. Um, we may well I, have, I, Incisive, we well have had it. I've got, biting and caustic in thought, manner or style. Yeah, that sounds, <laughs> that sounds about right. That's uh, their qualities, I, apparently, and the Tories will love it. Um, what else? Um, burning or pungent? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to stop looking there. I uh, guess so. Yeah, all right. Good work. Thanks, John. 0345 6060 973. Jerry says, Fishy Soon Gone's PR team have realised that the embarrassment of him not being able to verbally communicate to poor people in his street, or in the street, or in debates, have decided that from now on he will only communicate his policies via the medium of mime and dance. Now, that's a plan. I would actually pay a small amount of money to see that. And Tony says, despite all the rain that has filled up our reservoirs, I won't be able to afford to water my lawn when the 
sun finally stays out thanks to price hikes, says Tony. Yet neither would you want to put that water on your lawn. Disgusting. Oh, and definitely don't get it on your shoes. 0345 6060 973. Nick Abbott, LBC. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. You don't know what you're talking about, do you? Uh, on this or any other subject, absolutely. 0345 6060 973. Uh, East Yorkshire, hello, Mike. Hi, Nick, yeah. Um, you're talking about farms and um, what have you off the, the Friday debacle. Mm. And um, after I watched it... I went no, to no, the, you're, you're pronouncing it wrong. Debate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was right to start with. I think so, yeah. <laughs> Um, and the Farage fans didn't think he'd won at all. These are the people who followed him through UKIP really? and Brexit Party a lot. They're, they're gone. Forget. Because I came away thinking that he'd won. Well, they didn't. Not because of anything won. that he said, just because he, he is presenting simple solutions that which aren't, regardless of whether they, they would work or they're true or not, he just said simple things uh, to solve complicated problems. And by that method, he, he won. Well, OK, but their point of view was that um, they isolated him out on the far left. Yes, <laughs> the and far said, left. And said, yeah, and you believe that. Lot, they, and I said they draw lots. They said they'll have fixed it. Yeah. And then they all picked on him all night. Everybody picked on Nigel. It wasn't fair. He didn't get a fair crack of the whip. They were not happy. Well, this is this, this is the this is the Trump um, type of yeah, uh, mentality, it. isn't it? Everything is uh, totally unfair, and it's a fix, and uh, everyone's been really mean, and you know, it's just oh, just whining babies. God, it's painful. Complete, completely brainwashed. But um, go, but going back to Sunak, you know this D-Day thing that happened, yep. where he claimed that the plan, his plan, was to let other people do his itinerary. Weeks and weeks and weeks ago, and he never intended being there in the afternoon. Yeah. Well, the afternoon session, the international one, was by invitation only. And there was a guy on who'd been there, had been invited, and he turned up for that session with um, the world leaders. Mm. And you get a free complimentary program when you go in. Ooh. And it listed as <laughs> <soon after laughs> an attendee. Listen, what? It listed Sunak as an attendee. Ah. So the official programme thought that Sunak was going to be there. Right. So wh where does that leave you? Who's telling lies or what the hell's going well, on? Well, I, I didn't stuff? really... Hang on a minute. I didn't really understand his, his excuse. He said that, um, you know, these uh, events had been planned uh, a long time before, um, you know, uh, after... Uh, or a long time before, just after we'd announced the election. I think yeah, I'm getting that right. But, um, no, he said he but, planned it before the election was his argument that he didn't go back to do the political yeah, but thing. That, yeah, but that's nonsense, it. though. But he if he had planned, planned, if he had planned it before he had announced the election, then there yeah. would be no reason for him to have that interview. No, exactly so. But the point being that he'd told the organisers that he was going because his name was on the attendees list. Right. So that's another lie. One or the other's a lie. Right. Well, he probably didn't do anything of the sort. His people did. Yeah, his people did his itinerary, so one or, one or the other is a lie. Right. Either he intended to go, which is why his name was given, yeah. or he didn't intend to go. Well, of course he intended. Of course it was the intention that he would be there, because why wouldn't he be there? I mean, was he going to scarper? But he did. That's the surprising part. And, you know, we can um, drill down into the detail of it from now until the end of time. But the, th but the truth is, it was just flat-out embarrassing. And his, um, uh, is that I'm sorry wasn't really very much of an apology. It wasn't, and, um, oh, yeah, something else I meant to say. Last night, you were commenting on Angela, Angela Rayner's ginger hair and a red... Oh. Yeah. Yeah, well, she was wearing either a dress or a skirt because she was showing a bit of leg. And she was also showing shoes, which made me laugh because I thought... Mrs. May wouldn't get five yards across the town in this. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you can't wear those shoes and walk at the same time, Mrs. M. Kick them <laughs> off. Put, buy yourself a, a pair of pumps. Relax, you deserve it. <laughs> right, All right, thanks, Mike. 0345 6060 973. 
Susan says, listening to your show from South Edinburgh, Swiftly, Swifty, rather, is still belting it out over Murrayfield. Amazing, really, says Susan. As a Taylor Swift, about whom I know absolutely nothing. Zero. If my life depended on it, I could not name one of her songs, and I certainly couldn't sing one. Beyonce, on the other hand, that country album is fan blooming It is. I can't stop listening to it. Uh, let's see now. West Devon. Hello, Rose. Oh, hello, Nick. Rose. Um, yes, just, I, I, I'm ring, I've rung it about Farage. Oh, yes. Um, but Farage. just to say quickly about... Well, I mean, really. <laughs> well, Farage um, makes him sound like a salt-of-the-earth working class type, but he has... But that's right, the last we'll thing that he Farage, is. He's then. a Farage. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. I just wanted to quickly say about Sunak's bungling and doing the inappropriate thing mm. all the time. I, I remember I was thinking about it the other a few days ago, and I heard, I heard myself think, he doesn't know the fitness of things. And do you know where that phrase came from? It came from my geography mistress when I was about 13. Of course I didn't know that. <laughs> Stop it. Um... <laughs> um no, why well, you set me off laughing? I, I, well, I did my geography homework. I thought, oh, green ink for a change, that'd be nice. And so I did it in green ink. She said, Rosina, the trouble with you is you don't need to you know the fitness of things. <laughs> she stayed with me all this time. Well, she was criticising your use of green ink. Yes. Yeah, well, I would think so too. Black or blue? I mean, blue is about as extravagant a colour as you want on your homework. Yes, I know, Nick. Green. Yes. What an awful <laughs> child you were, Rose. You'd be thrashed. <laughs> oh, dear. Plus well, geography. Enough. Boring! Uh, <laughs> well, it was a bit, yeah. I mean, geography but, is just remembering. Like, history is just remember. I couldn't stand either of those two subjects. History is just names and dates, and I don't have a brain for either of those two things. And geography is just remembering. Mm. Uh, and I'm no good at that stuff. I never no. was. I mean, I'm particularly not now, but I, I wasn't even when I was a kid. No. Anyway, Farage. Yes. Fa no, Farage. Well, this is a thing. I accidentally heard him on the radio. I always switch him off. And I, you always do I what, I heard huh? him. I switch him off. Sorry, I, I do that. It's a... You switch I, I him had a friend once who off. said off all the time. <laughs> yes, it was terribly funny. He even <laughs> said cloth. Yes. <laughs> well, that's just silly. <laughs> Or... But I also had a friend who was an actor yes. for, a, for a while. Right. Um, I mean, he was my friend for a while, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? We're out of touch now, but... Yeah. And I remember him saying about some other actor, I don't think he named them, um, I could see him acting. And I could hear Far Farage acting, this voice, is this that intonation that he does. I think it's fabricated. It's this light, friendly, honest John, mm. and above all, informal yeah. thing well, he, that he's yes. got going. Uh, he's got so this... he's different from the others. Yes. He's got this informality. He has the delivery of, well, this is just uh, perfectly uh, obvious what I'm about to say. And then he'll proceed to give you a simple solution to a complicated problem. Or like a three-word mm. um, slogan, mm. you know, get Brexit done, or, or that sort of nonsense. And there's a certain element that is uh, is is easily duped by that kind of thing and i'm talking i'm talking about donald trump those people yeah well yeah it's seductive and why may i ask the minute he popped up at the beginning of the week whenever it was hmm. and spoke did the country obediently step into line talk all day about him yeah. and about immigration because he told us to it's the same I as mean, trump why? it's the same as trump People in the media cannot stop pointing their cameras at either him or Trump. It's the same deal. Even if you don't like what they say, even if you can't stand them, there is a certain uh, 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 element of um, irresistibility about them. They're box office. I'm not quite sure why, really, in the case of Farage. I'm well, think of, um, I mean, this is not a, a, a perfect uh, uh, correlation, but um, like a traffic accident, you might not want oh. to, it might not be very nice to look at, but you can't stop yourself peeking, can you? Oh, it's a bit like that, you think, yes. No, I, I can't 
stand it. I can't stand a second of it. I have to switch him off. 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 And, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, one does, doesn't one? And yes. what a, yeah, one does. And Sunak, could it be that he's just a bit thick? No. He's, he's not very bright. Well, he, I think, I think he, yeah, it? well, it would, but I think he has um, specific intelligence. He's a numbers bloke. He's one of these wonks who sit in front of oh, yeah, seven, numbers, yeah. seven screens yeah. and just moves numbers about them. And, uh, that's and, very specific. Yeah, and the end of the day comes and he's made a hundred million pounds. Yeah, but I mean, sick in every other way is what I meant. Yes, <laughs> he, yeah, he has no social skills or, um, or understanding of other human beings. Other human oh, beings that or other human beings that aren't millionaires that don't have any um, issue with money that have never thought about the price of things because they can afford everything. Mm, yeah, or any or the sort of intelligence that sees well, I did that wrong, so I won't do it the same next time. <laughs> or you know, keep that that sort of intelligence, isn't it? Well, yes. that didn't work, so I won't do it again. Like right. the Rwanda thing, or all sorts of things. Or yeah. standing in front of ridiculous. No, he he's, he's, uh, he has no social skills of any kind whatsoever. He can't read people either or un really understand the, uh, the consequence of his reactions in the moment. Like a, a, like a doctor no. was haranguing him about how ridiculous it is that there's so many GPs in this country that can't get work and yet we're in want of GPs. And yeah. <laughs> Rishi Sunak's response was to laugh at her in public. He did that. I mean, the guy's so bad at this, it's almost like the party is deliberately trying to lose. What do you think, Liz? Absolutely. On your radio, on Global Player, and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation, this is LBC. This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Would you mind telling me what this is all about? Uh, you know, stuff. Pat says, any idea what D-Day falls on next year? Thanks. I don't know. We'll, we'll check with Rishi's diary. Uh, Clive says, Sunak's election campaigning is basically like watching a clown in a minefield. <laughs> yeah, yeah, on a pogo stick. Weybridge, George. Oh, well, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, George. Oh, oh well, thanks for taking my call. I've almost gone to sleep. Um, I yeah, me, me too. <laughs> well, stay awake for this one if you can. Um, I, I was just listening to your Hamas saying about... Hamas is claiming oh, 200... Oh, wait a minute. Sorry, that's my fault. Go ahead. I was listening to you saying <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Me, um, how um, you thought um, that the top earners ought to pay a bigger share of tax. Um, and it so happened, I've just been re reading the latest figures in today's paper, yeah. um, saying that nearly the top 1% of earners in mm. this country, taxpayers, yeah. are already paying almost 30% of total tax. Well, by earners, you mean yeah. people who are earning a wage, don't you? No, no, I'm talking about taxpayers. So Yes, but taxpayers, by earners, you mean people who are earning a wage, don't you? No, no, I didn't, no, I, I, I don't mean, t <coughs> I don't mean earners, I, I mean taxpayers, people yes. who pay tax. Right. And people who pay tax obviously can get their money from a, a variety of different sources. Um, they may be earning no, it as uh, no, company the, the, directors no, or no. employers. Yeah, um, by they, they, they may their be, they may wages. Be That's what you're talking about. Wages. No, it's ta no. A taxpayer <sighs> pays tax, and the top one percent of um, taxpayers yeah. pay almost thirty percent of total tax. The top one percent of wage earners. When it comes to wage earners, of course, they suffer because if you're a wage earner, the tax is actually taken away from you before you get it. Correct. So, 
Yes. So if you're a banker, say, and you earn a salary, mm -hmm. um, they take the money away from you before yeah. you get it. Uh, by that method, point. people can say that the top 1% pay whatever it is that you just said, 30% of right. all tax. But, no, no, but, that's no, no, not, but that is a distortion of the truth, though. But, but not only that, though, that the top 10% of earners, which actually includes anybody earning over £65,800 a year... Yeah. Um, they are paying now just over sixty percent of all tax. Right. So and what you're wait, what you're saying is that the middle classes pay all the tax, which is true. The super well, rich don't. Well, well, they do because they're paying. No, um, no, George, no, George. They the don't. Tax. No, they don't. The middle classes pay all the tax. Those people who are earning, let's say, between fifty and one hundred and fifty thousand a year per household, those are the people that are paying all the tax. Once you start earning millions, then you can spend enough money to make your tax bill disappear like a cloud of mist. You can't actually make people pay tax if they don't want to. Um, yeah, yeah, you can for the for the reason that we have previously described: is it gets taken out of your wages before you get them. Yes, but you you may also um, be running a business, and when I started my business years ago, um, we had a Labour government. We had uh, the Chancellor of the Exchequer at the time was Dennis Healy, um, and his famous statement was, "I'm going to squeeze them until the pips squeak." Yeah, and he didn't. And I was trying to develop my business at the time. It took off okay, um, but um, as soon as I started to make a profit, I found I was paying something like 85% of everything I earned, and it just wasn't worth it. Um, my wife had a good job. Uh, she was highly qualified, spoke several languages. Right, well, and, you're talking um, about ancient history. That's not now. No, but it's, the same, it's exactly the same sort of um, process, because... Uh, it, politicians seem to think they can just tax people, and if you're earning a fair bit of money, they think they can just tax it away, but they can't, and I wouldn't let them do it. And so my wife... They, a, they only can't because people escape to what is called a tax haven. Now, if tax havens were shut down for the benefit of all human beings on Earth, apart from the tiny handful of people in whose accounts the wealth of the world resides then the, uh, the planet would be a better and more healthy place. The super rich well, I, I, don't pay tax. It's the well, middle I, classes I, I, that pay tax. It's those who are the upper earners in the middle classes who, are, who get paid wages. Those are the people that pay the tax. But that's not wealth. Those are earnings. The people with the money, they don't pay tax because they don't get wages. They earn their money through the appreciation of their assets. Well, in my particular case, um, I would wake up in the morning and I would think to myself, now, what shall I do today? You know, shall I develop the business or shall I f try and figure out how to minimise my taxes and bring them down? Well, it well, was well, no people, you know, because... people, are, people normally pay accountants to do that sort of thing. Well, I, I'm a qualified in accountancy, so I didn't need to do that. And you, couldn't, um, and you still couldn't figure it out? Well, you, you don't actually need to be an accountant because basically um, they're taxing you on your profit. And well, you yeah. can say to them, well, <laughs> you're, you're, you're not going to take any more money of from course. me. Of course. I'm not going to earn a pound and pay 85 pence in that pound to tax. I'm simply not going to do it. Right. So, well, I've, um, I've, I've barely I've ever heard of anybody so... I mean, you're calling from Weybridge, George. Yeah. It seems to me like you've probably done all right in life. Waybridge been, in Surrey, I've, one of the I've, richest places in the country. I've been very lucky. I mean, I started off in... A, I was brought up in a... Um, yeah, I don't care about your... In, I'm not remotely interested in your history, but your point is that the super-rich are, uh, like, they're squeezed until the uh, pips uh, come out, or whatever was the phrase. And that's not true. The, the, the well-off, yes, they get taxed because the tax gets taken from their wage. But wages are not how you get rich. It's the appreciation of your assets. And assets are, are taxed almost not at all in some cases. I mean, there was a, the UK, the EU tax observatory. Uh, uh, last year, no, two, yeah, last year, they um, were looking at um, tax abuse. 
And they said the kind of loopholes that allow the super rich, and I'm not talking about people who earn 150 grand a year, I'm talking about people who have hundreds of millions, if not billions of pounds of assets. Those are the super rich. That's the 0.1%. And I think 0.1% of the people in uh, America own something like 50% of all of the wealth in America. So it's like a handful of people who've got all the cash. These loopholes that are written, I would imagine, specifically to benefit them, they can avoid certain forms of income tax, resulting in effective tax rates, so said the EU Tax Observatory, worth 0 to 0 0.6% of their wealth. That's the tax rate that the super rich pay. Zero to 0.6% of their total wealth. Meanwhile, income tax is levied on most wealthy citizens who do not employ these loopholes, meaning they end up paying between 20% and 50%, which is still way below what you would... Um, I mean, at 20% is way below what their secretary would pay. And uh, uh, Buff Buffett, um, Warren Buffett, he said this a while ago. He said, my secretary pays a higher tax rate than I do. The guy's a bazillionaire. So they're saying it out loud. And still you get people like George with a sob story about how uh, the, uh, the rich are paying all the taxes. But it's not. It's the middle class that are paying all the taxes. The rich don't. Because they can afford not to. <sighs> 0345-6060-973. Andy says, I think Sunak is afraid of international leaders because they show him up and he feels inferior. I think he has imposter syndrome. Stu says, did anybody sell fishy that the D-Day landings were 80 years ago and the danger is over? Still, he bravely ran away. And um, this says, oh look, the Tories' latest announcement is to cut everyone's benefits. Who would have guessed? What a surprise. I know, I think they're increasing benefits for those who are earning um, 120 grand a year, aren't they? Child support. <laughs> you couldn't make it up. 0345 6060 973. Uh, let's have uh, Cowbridge. Hello, Chris. Oh, good evening, Nick. How are you doing? Good, thanks. Oh, good. Um, I was actually calling. Um to obviously reflect on uh, Titchy's second most successful and productive day of his campaign, where he basically didn't participate. Um, and I was wondering, he's developing a pattern where he has a spectacularly bad week mm. and then runs away to speak to his advisors. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I would advise him not to speak to his advisors. I, I tell you what. Whatever Starmer is paying them isn't enough. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think you've got uh, spies in your camp, Rishi Sunak. Uh, well, what I was thinking is that we all have that little voice in the back of our head that when you do something wrong or you screw up or mm. you say something wrong to your wife and you were like, ah, do you know, what? I shouldn't have said that. Yep. I'll buy a bunch of flowers. You know you've done something wrong. Right. Do you think he has that little voice that thinks, you know what, that thing in, that little shindig in Normandy, maybe I should have stayed no. to the party's end. Yeah. No, I do don't think he, he does. I, I think that there's, that it's like socially there is something missing there. I don't, I don't think he really is, um, he, he sort of has social intelligence uh, in that he's not very good with people and he doesn't, um, he really doesn't like being questioned or disagreed with and he gets very ratty when that happens, as you see with uh, Prime Minister's questions, when he turns into a, like a snarly little, like Roland Rat type character, I, I was going to say like a little, like a little yappy Yorkshire Terrier. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, um, and then w which looks equally as sad when it gets wet as he does in a suit. Well, it is, um, yeah, it's not sad. It's more uh, uncomfortable. Oh, because he, he because thought. half the time yeah, well, half the yeah it. half the time he's got this <laughs> sort of hurt puppy dog eyes expression on his face, and yeah. the and the other half is is like this this tense ball of barely controlled rage. I know it, it, it does come across, doesn't it? I mean, the other thing I was wondering is if we need to remember he was the runner up in that uh, yeah. prime minister thing, and. If we remember correctly, Liz Truss lost to a lettuce. <laughs> so, Which is a disgrace. If, Even she would say that. That is a disgrace. To lose to a lettuce. 
so my thinking is at this point could we have the lettuce because it can't do any work <laughs> or any other salad vegetable if the lettuce is not available well that's that's not fair to say Nick, because two vegetables were in a running of that pm race and they both looked like they've been spectacular failures i mean that's quite something isn't it yeah, it's a, an achievement, and they managed to pull it off. Yeah. All right, good work. Thanks, Chris. 0345 6060 973. Milky texts, I booked the July the 5th off to watch them fall. I'm thinking that that's a pretty good idea, by the way. Book ju July the 5th off. Don't stay up all night because it's, the results will come in really late. But waking up the next day and just getting it all at once the result, that's it, the end. It's a bit of a, I don't know, it'll be a bit of a, an anticlimax, really. I mean, don't you want the, uh, the the tension? Don't you want the results to be dribbled out? Don't you want to stew in the deliciousness of it? So, I think that's an excellent idea, mind. Set your recorder to start at about sort of two o'clock in the morning and then watch it in real time when you wake up but making sure that you don't uh, accidentally stumble across the live news. And then you'll be able to, um, you know, maintain uh, your beautiful complexion and you won't look like you've missed sleep. And you'll be able to, uh, you know, enjoy the moment as it unfolds. I've invented watching the election results. You're welcome. Thank you. 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott, LBC. This is LBC. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. You've got a good. Um, you know, your, your mind is a little bit. You know what I mean? Three-dimensional. Three-dimensional. Wow. Yowza. Sylvia says, Nick, I blame you. <gasps> I was drifting to sleep, says Sylvia, but you said, hands up if you can't wait to vote. And I raised my arm agreeing and broke a nail on my bunk bed. <laughs> Your fault, says Sylvia. I am very apologetic, Sylvia. I am very sorry that I screwed up. Totally screwed up. Let's have um, Woolwich. Hello, Richard. Oh, Woolwich. Yes, sir. Hi, sir. Um, uh, just following on from what you were saying there, mm. uh, Nick, we're go my chums and I are going to have a drinking game on election night called Let's Get Shot of Let's Get Shot of Them. Right. And we're going to we're going to drink a shot of whatever mm -hmm. every time a Tory big name goes down. A uh, big name. See, that's the key. Because otherwise you <laughs> you might be um, I, I would book an ambulance before you start drinking if it's just any uh, of them. But if the, if it's somebody that you know and have heard of, then yes, okay. Yeah, but Nick, I I just want to so this leaders debate was interesting, and I my sister who is not dare I say the brightest button in the sewing box. Wow. Um, yeah, okay. Your own sister. My own sister. There, I'm going to... Yeah. Um, she's probably not listening, I hope. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> she... she we, we had a conversation, she and I, mm. where she said that Labour are going to put up her taxes. And it, I just... I just... I, I didn't know where to start, really, but... Yeah. It was, it was, but what it, it but the, the thing behind that was, made me reflect on this kind of Tory policy of keep reinforcing this 2000 tax thing. Yes. Probably works. Yes. To my sister, who's not the brightest right. button in the sewing box, you She's know. A, yeah, a dingling. Let's not beat around the bush. Yeah, a dingling. <laughs> Are you calling my sister a dingling? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard terrible well, things I about her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's um, right. That's that's the way to political success in this country. That's why Nigel Farage um, is uh, won that debate, I think, because he presented simple solutions to complicated problems and you just say the same thing over and over again. You hit a three, maximum four word slogan and just repeat it over and over again. And that's that twenty th that £2,000 lie. Over and over and over again. They're told that they're lying 
and their answer is to repeat the lie. And it just gets into people's brains, and it doesn't matter whether you've... Uh, uh, whether you know that it's a lie or not, you've heard it again and again. So it's in there, and um, and you believe it. Exactly. And you know what? And, and that's really where I wanted to go with um, Farage because yeah, I what I what I heard on that ladies' debate, mm. he was saying frankly everything, whether it was housing. Whether it was um, the NHS, the, the, the doctors, the economy, NHS. it was all ruined because uh, the <laughs> Conservatives and the Labour are the same. I, I am the disruptor. I am the uh, the the a friend of the working person, good, honest, down to earth. That's me, and it's just. I mean, it's yeah, the, op it's the opposite know. of who he is. I mean, he's the he is yeah. the son of a stockbroker who went to private school and then went to, to the city to be a trader. His fr if his friends aren't millionaires, they're billionaires. I mean, it's the, it's the absolute opposite of his um, flat hat and a pint and a fag uh, routine. It, it was that, Nick, but also... And, and by the way, there was knife crime as well that came up in that. But what I... Oh, yeah. Hog, uh, flog them and... What um, I heard from all of Hang them. Yeah. yeah. What I heard from it all disturbingly was it it's it's all the problem of immigration that the, the, the problem was immigration like, like i said it's simple solution simple solutions to complicated problems exactly right. exactly yeah. nick and i just find it and and so it kind of i find this kind of a reinforcing message to to the dingalings which mm. which i include my sister in this and i'm sorry for that on a late night <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do that but i just find it kind of I just find it a bit kind of yeah. disturbing. It is disturbing. That, yeah, yeah that just, there's so I many people. Disturbed. So many people who get um, sucked in by this. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I've got another call coming in. It's your sister wants to have a chat. <laughs> 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 Thanks a lot, Richard. O three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. Fraser Nelson in the Spectator said the following: There are serious issues at stake in this general election, and the Tories have just released nonsense figures with fake attribution and given it to newspapers who took it on trust. I'm really not sure that this will help their chances very much. Well, they're banking on it. Because there's a certain number of people who will believe what they hear if they hear it over and over and over again. If it sort of chimes with their uh, belief system. He said, the Office for Budget Responsibility says the Tories plan to increase taxes to 37.1% of GDP by 2028. So the 0.6% percent increase works out at 20 billion more tax raised in that year than if the uh, tax ratio had stayed flat. Are you with me so far? No. <laughs> he said, add up all four years as the Tories did with their Labour calculation because that two grand, by the way, is not all in one go. It's over four years. Uh, add it up over all four years and you end up with £320 rise in year one, 620 in year two, 930 in year three and 1150 in the final year. That's £3,020 per working household. These are the Tories' own plans. That's how much they cost. The Office for Budget Responsibility say the Tories plan to increase taxes to 37.1% of GDP by 2028. That's their plan. It will cost... £3,020 per working household. Except, says Fraser Nelson in The Spectator, this would be just as misleading as the £2,000 figure that Sunak has used so often in the debate. That's the right-wing Spectator magazine in an article by the right-wing Fraser Nelson fact-checking the dear leader and finding him wanting. And the rest of the party as well, because they keep uh, uh, churning out this uh, guff too. And, by the way, Sky News pointed out uh, to some hapless dope who has pushed out to defend the indefensible, that since 2019, as per the figures from the Office for Budget Responsibility, taxes in this country have gone up since 2019 13 grand per household. That's why it's difficult to afford stuff anymore, because you're paying 13 grand per household more in taxes on average which rather puts the claim about Labour raising taxes by two grand into perspective. I mean, even if it was true, which it isn't, it would still be less expensive under Labour than under the Tories. 
because forget the 13 grand that taxes have gone up since 2019. The way that the Tories have come up with this two grand that or Labour will cost you in extra taxes, if you apply the same calculations to their own plans, then it will be Labour is will cost you two grand and the Tories will cost you three thousand and twenty pounds. But none of the above. <laughs> None of the above is true at all, because that's not what will happen in real life. But uh, the, uh, keep that in mind. When you hear that two grand figure, just think, well, three grand is uh, what you would come up with if you made the same calculation about the Conservative Party's plans. <sighs> Sylvia says, Sil oh, uh, well, never mind about Sylvia. What does Sylvia's mother say? Oh, yeah, that's, uh, she broke her nail on her bunk bed. All my fault. I said I was sorry. Neil says, by Rishi Sunak leaving Normandy sooner than was by Rishi Sunak leaving Normandy sooner than was expected, he started a whole new conflict. <laughs> yeah, that's right, he did. And um, Milky texts, oh, I've read that one already. Booked July the fifth off. Keith says there are no jobs. I worked as a freelance IT project manager and lots of IT professionals can't get work now. Affirmative. Yeah, that's because um, robots are going to take your job. If they haven't taken your job already in IT, they will do. All those shiny buildings that those tech companies are uh, throwing up, they ain't going to have nobody in them because there will be just one uh, computer chip that you could fit in the coin pocket of your jeans that will do the jobs of thousands of people. And, ironically, those are the people that are inventing the chip that's going to replace them. Keith says, my daughter is a student looking for summer work and applied for 30 jobs with no replies. G texts. Well, it depends what kind of jobs you uh, want to do. If you want to do the kind of jobs that uh, Eastern Europeans used to do in this country, then there's plenty of those because uh, they're not here to do them anymore. But we don't want to do those jobs. We would rather somebody else do those jobs for us because they're they don't pay very much and they're difficult and they're backbreaking and uh, you know they're uncomfortable and they're going nowhere jobs. So we would rather do better jobs. But this is what we're going to be reduced to, because uh, we insist on uh, the people that used to make the country tick over going away. Then either those jobs don't get done or we're going to have to do them. And so a, a certain individual's promise of a high-wage, high-tech economy is actually a low-tech, low-wage economy. Half of the country is going to be sitting at home uh, applying for jobs, and the other half is going to be biking pizzas over to them. 0345 6060 973 Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott, LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. Nick Abbott. Alexa, send a comment to LBC. Right, so what we do? Given we're doing a radio show, try to keep up, dear. I do a podcast with Carol McGiffin, by the way. Oh, right, yeah. It is a laugh. If you want to just take a break from all of this, you know, all of this then this podcast that I do with Carol McGiffin will be right up your alley. It's, uh, it's supposed to be a problem-solving podcast. And to be fair to me and her, we do occasionally solve people's problems. Every now and again, we do come up with some excellent advice. Usually, we're just laughing our faces off at, uh, you know, whatever happens to uh, flit across our otherwise empty minds. I'm not really selling it very, <laughs> very well, am I? No. <laughs> It's, uh, it's called What's Your Problem with Nick and Carol? Now, there's over 100, I think there's over 130 episodes up there at the moment. And uh, they're 50 minutes long, 45, 50 minutes long, something like that. They come out on a Friday and a Monday, and uh, they are a laugh. I mean, there's, there's no point in the week that I laugh more than doing that uh, podcast with Carol. So if you want to just tune out... If you just want to have a giggle, then it will be right up your alley. It's called What's Your Problem with Nick and Carol. It's on Global Player. And if you want us to have a bash at your dilemma, then send it to this address. Nick and Carol at global.com. N-I-C-K-A-N-D-C-A-R-O-L at global.com. And prepare for total satisfaction. Oh, right. 
right, yeah. Ask for it by name on an internet near you. What is your problem with Nick and Carol? Heston, Isaac. Hello, Nick. Yes, sir. Right. Three things. Let, let's start the summary. Number one. Yes. Um, number one is... Uh, oh, God, I forgot number one. Oh, yeah, 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 number one. Yeah. <laughs> right, I was... <laughs> sorry. Sorry, it's, it's late at night. I was listening to... Um, just been listening to um, your conversation with uh, the caller, George, right? And I just... I just, I, I just couldn't stop. I couldn't stop laughing. What George needs to do, in fact, what you were saying to George, I learned in reading um, a book called, uh, well, two books, both of them by the same author, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and Cashflow Quadrant by Robert, Robert Kiyosaki. When you were explaining to George, you know, um, um, uh, these uh, concepts to, um, you know, n n these concepts to George, I thought to myself, yep, uh, yep, uh, yep, I've learned those in Rich Dad, Poor Dad and Cash Flow yeah. Quadrant. Right, you're so talking I about the guy George who was, yeah, yeah, you're talking about the guy who was complaining that uh, well-off people pay more tax and uh, my Absolutely, contention yes. is that only up to a certain point and then once you start mm. uh, getting your your wealth from your assets rather than your yes. wages, then at that, at that point, then uh, the the rules give you a pass essentially because the rules Absolutely. have been written by people with assets. Absolutely, I think what George needs to do right in cash flow quadrant, there is the four quadrants are e uh, employees, self employed, business, and investors. I think George is um, self. I think George is self employed. In other words, he owns the job. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Next one is that. Um, yeah. I um, the second leaders debate. Okay. I I had a choice. Um, should I watch a second leaders debate or should I watch England v Iceland? So I chose. <laughs> Eng I chose England v oh, Iceland. Oh no! And I, I thought to myself. Maybe I should have watched a league. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I didn't no. see, I didn't see the game, and, and I don't think they put up um, highlights, a highlights package. And even if they did, knowing that we'd lost, yeah. I wouldn't have watched it. But uh, were, were we really that bad? Well, it was, we just didn't finish in the final third. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, we controlled the game, did we? You know, and and passed the ball about. You know which uh, my good friend thought was funny, because he thought, well, isn't that the idea of um, football? <laughs> well, how much funny. possession did we have? Um, it was quite a bit, at least 60%. Right. At least, right. you know. And when we were on the ball, we did look convincing. But, did uh, we? You know, yeah, but, uh, you know, we just couldn't. But uh, Iceland defended well, you know, so Iceland defended well. And plus, a, a lot of players have got to run out, you know, so... Uh, yeah. Right, just anyway, so, uh, yeah. third, blood them. Third thing, mm -hmm. third thing, right, I watched the first 40 minutes of the first um, uh, leaders' debate. I only watched the first uh, f uh, 40 minutes because uh, um, nature called for a sit-down performance. Oh, right? <laughs> way too much information, Isaac. <laughs> and uh, anyway... So I'll watch the last twenty minutes on catch up. Yeah. Um, like a like a second leaders. Um, and um, what I thought uh, personally between the leaders, it was a score draw. But what I thought Keir Starmer did was absolutely brilliant. In fact, one of you, in fact, it was explained on um, the James O'Brien show. One of the callers there. Hmm. What um, what um, what Starmer did. He let um, uh, Rishi Sunak, or should I say, Richard Richard, soon to be sacked, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. he 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 let him uh, peddle the lie over and over again, you know, and then after what I don't know, third or fourth time, Keir Starmer pulled out a typical lawyer's trick. He said, "This is a lie," and gave details. Apparently, it's a lawyer's technique. You know, and um, and um, you know, um, Rishi Sunak forgot that you know he's up against one of the top lawyers. Or you know, uh, this country has. You know, well, and, the, um, the, the, I was talking about this earlier on. Right wing commentators said that Rishi Sunak won. 
and his team was supposed to be delighted with his performance. But I, mm. I, the, uh, the surveys, two of which I uh, gave the information about earlier on, put, um, mm. uh, put Keir Starmer as way ahead in the lead. But people who were asked afterwards to give a one-word response to what they'd just seen in that leaders' debate between Starmer and Sunak, mm. and, the, and the number one word was frustrating. Hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, I would say, to be honest with you, I thought um, I thought Rishi Sunak was um, uh, was rather rude or or bullying. He tried to r ride roughshod over um, Keir Starmer, like yeah. he did Liz Truss. Right. I mean, with Liz Truss, I mean, oh my God, he was all over it. But Keir Starmer, you know, don't forget, he's a lawyer. You know, he debates um, Rishi Sunak uh, every week in PMQs, you yes. know. Mm. So, um, but he did try and bully him, you know. And um, also, the other thing as well, I during, during, during the England-Iceland game, I tuned in for about one minute. And um, what I saw during the one minute was um, Penny Morden being very rude uh, <laughs> and rather <laughs> aggressive to um, yeah. Angela Rayner. She was sort of pointy, you know, Trying you to, are this yeah. and you are that, and in five years' time, you're going to be the Prime Minister and blah, blah, and I thought, oh, God, let's go back to the football. <laughs> <You know. laughs> as depressing as that was, yeah. All right, thanks a lot, Isaac. 0345 6060 973. Jerry says, the colours worn by Friday's debatees were so bright, I had to use my TV settings to reduce the tones before my retinas burned out. They were. Yeah, they really were. Uh, all in pink and all in green and all in red. And um, then there was the, uh, the hair don't. It was, um, yeah, it was, it was actually um, uh, uh, migraine-inducing. Martin says, I have friends that live in France. Hang on a minute. Martin says, I have friends that live in France, and they... Oh, hang on a minute. Just had to cough there. Eh -eh. See if I can get through it this time. Martin says, I have friends that live in France, and they say that the health service is brilliant. Well, that'd be great. Can, I, <laughs> can somebody see me now? <clears throat> he says, no long waits. It even includes dental treatment. No wonder it's 20% more, because you get more for your money, says Martin. Yeah, I know people who have gone to live in France because the health service there is better. Simon says, Nigel Farage won last night's debate because he dares to talk about subjects the boring politicians won't. No, what you mean is he gives simple solutions to complicated problems, which is attractive to those who can't understand the problem. And uh, that's not the same as what you just said. Andy text, Sunak's election campaign being compared to a clan in a minefield is the best I've heard yet. And now I'm off to apologise to my cat for her rather <laughs> unexpected beer shampoo. Oh. <laughs> uh, on a pogo stick was my addition, which I think uh, put, the, put the cream on the top of it. 0345 6060 973. I, I, you never know, I might actually make it to the end of this programme. I'm going to have to cough again. One moment. I do believe I need a glass of water. Luton. Hello, John. Yeah, uh, why don't you invite Richard Sunak on uh, your podcast with Karen McGiffin? <laughs> what's, what's my problem by Richard Sunak? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you get better advice from you, because I, I, I'm just completely stunned. Um, I'm, I'm Talking to, I just can't believe what's happened that actually happened. Is it real? Or is it... I only conceive that he desperately wants to get out of a job and get over to the USA. I, there's two people that should be in the USA. One is Sunak and one is Farage. What is Farage doing? What yeah, is he doing? I, I, on when he's trashed the country? I don't know what's going on there at all. But I think <laughs> that Rishi Sunak does appear to be genuinely trying to hold on to that job. I, I cannot imagine that anybody uh, who is as uh, as tetchy and vain as he is would put himself through um, such humiliation if there wasn't something at the end of this this uh, this route. So I think yeah. that he is trying to hold on 
what might be happening is if if you are right in your suspicions is that the party chose him because they felt that he would crash the party into a tree because why would anybody <laughs> in their right minds really want to take over a country in the state that it is exactly uh, I, I knew the other thing I was going to mention is that we're in a bit of a dangerous situation because if you notice there could potentially be quite a vacuum when they were win the right the right wing side of it I mean we've got there are good conservative MPs like Rory, Rory um, I can't remember the good ones but they're, 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 they're <laughs> awesome and so you're going to end up with a vacuum with people like Farage yeah. coming in and then you look at Europe uh, did you know that the um, in Europe they're saying I look at one paper it says the far right has not only become a stable feature of EU project, mm. po- politics, it's become normalised, no longer a fringe phenomenon in Europe, but the majority of member states. So yeah. with the pace of the far right, we've got to, we've got to keep our eye on who is actually the so-called opposition. If Nigel Farage is there, good grief. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, well, you think that that kind of thing can't happen in this country, like, uh, like you know, like Argentina or, uh, you know, uh, yeah. other, other places. But uh, yes, it can. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. Yes. Yeah, it can. I mean, I was actually just playing, I won't be fooled again by the who. Oh, yeah. Because I was one of the victims who voted Brexit because right. the Conservatives yeah. made it so be- the mother-in-law. Because yeah, Roger so Daltrey was- told you to. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and basically the Tories didn't give me a strong enough reason. What I'm um, the, the number of regret exits and one you join we join the EU is millions. So I'm hoping that Labour will actually uh, they want us back, um, but they they want to see a sound leadership. Uh, they want to see a Labour winning, obviously. Um, so we got to we got to rejoin the EU. I, like I'm not sure on. that they do want us back because th- they would know that. If we did come back under a Labour government, then under a Tory government or a Nigel Farage government, that we would be bounced right back out again. I, I'm not sure they do want us back. A Farage government? Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> well, it, for, for the reasons that you've just explained. I know. Well, I know. And that, that's why... I, I, what can we do to prevent that? I mean, I, I mean it's John, scary. I'll tell you what we can do to prevent it. Vote on July the 4th. And I bet it's, you that 60 that 60 percent that it'll be about 60 percent the turnout i betcha mm-hmm. betcha betcha 40 percent of the people that could actually make a difference can't won't be bothered to go out on the day i bet that's true yeah do, do you think all this photo id stuff is is um going to cause trouble, trouble yes trouble well it's designed it. to cause trouble it's a, exactly. it's a cute um wheeze that they stole off the republicans in america in order to prevent exactly. uh, people who won't vote conservative from going to the polls yeah obviously it's, oh boy you've got to keep your eyes open on this yes one. you do and uh, don't uh, drop off at any time prop your eyelids open with matchsticks if necessary thanks a lot john this is um, Kemi Badenoch. A vote for reform will let in Labour and allow Keir Starmer to reverse Brexit and strengthen militant trade unions, Kemi Badenoch said. Not fix the economic, business and social problems that leaving the EU has caused and support the rights of workers. Who will save us from this hellscape? And what militant rights is she talking about? Banning zero hours contracts, ensuring workers get regular hours, giving workers a right to switch off after work, and making flexible working a right. You know, basic dignity for the worker. In an interview with the Daily Mail, the business secretary, Kemi Badnock, said Tory voters flirting with reform risk ushering in a Labour government that will have no interest in cutting immigration and which will smother business in red tape putting the economy into reverse. Can this woman hear herself? In other news, the Conservatives have presided over record numbers of immigration, which has risen every year that they've been in power, lately mostly from India, Nigeria, Pakistan and China, not what your Brexit voter had in mind, I bet. And as for red tape, she's the business secretary. So there's no reason to suppose that she should know anything about business. But if you walk out of your bubble, Kemi, and talk to business persons, you'll find that they're buried up to their necks in the red tape. I mean, just the other day, the clothing and footwear manufacturers in Britain reported that their trade exports to the EU had plummeted from £7.4 billion a year to £2.7 billion because of the extra red tape that's come from the Tories' catastrophic Brexit. Imagine that. More expensive clothes 
uh, food, clothing and footwear straight away. We could have cheaper food, clothing and footwear straight away by getting rid of the protectionist anti-trade tariffs that the EU imposes. And it would be very good for the British people and it would provide certainty. And I think once there's certainty, the country will begin to reunite. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. We are running late. Let's have Bromley. Luke. Nick. Yes, Luke. <laughs> Hi, Nick. Right, I've been listening to the radio most of today, uh, and one thing that I've not heard come up, which I thought of, now, Sunak, Richard Sunak, did not attend all the DJ events, especially the main one. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I've suddenly thought, is it lack of patriotism? Is it lack of... In- is, it, is he incompetent or something else? And I actually thought to myself, it could actually be that he doesn't value the, the benefit or realise the benefits of networking, because if you think, going back through his premiership of only six, 18 months or whatever, he didn't attend, or he wasn't going to attend, or well, he didn't attend Davos, which is a massive... Do you remember that? Um, the World Forum. Yeah. You don't need to remember, it's true. Right. So he'd just become PM, and he said, no, I'm going to stay in the UK. Yeah. And what PM doesn't attend the World Economic Forum, right? You know, striking deals. It's all about networking with big deal, big bots, you know, big cheese and stuff. And then, uh, later on, uh, what was it, the um, COP27, he said, I'm not going to attend that. In the end, there was a massive hoo-ha for all the press and stuff, and he ended up saying, OK, I'll go. He could have resumed over there for a quick meet, mm. and resumed back again. Now, Well, these are, these are social events, and he doesn't really do people. I think he does no, staring into say. a computer think, screen and moving numbers around. He's like that guy, an accountant, who's really good at his job as an accountant type thing, who sits, does late nights, doesn't mix with people, doesn't go to the after meal drinks and stuff. Yeah. And just gets on with his job. And in fairness to him, he's trying to do his best. I don't think he's doing uh, Well, quiet. I don't know. Is he? Well, Is this his uh, best? <laughs> no. Yeah. He's trying hard, I'm saying. Trying. What I'm right. trying to say is, okay. so would you, would you agree that perhaps he's miscalculated this one again, another world event, which he should have been at, you know, and wasn't? He should have been seen as a big prize. No, it's it's Nixon. worse than that, Luke. He was there yeah. and he left. He didn't have to go there. He, he was there already. Yeah, he left early. That's right. So I just think, and that, those are the ones I can think of. I'm sure there's other things that he hasn't attended that another PM would have. I mean, he doesn't exactly zoom around the world meeting other people much. And I just think he doesn't really value the benefit of, of networking no. and meeting people. Well, if, if you've made your money by moving numbers around a screen, then there is no benefit to meeting people or networking. Yeah, you see, well, I mean, in business, we all know the benefits of networking. You meet big people. Well, yeah, I guess so. I mean, you would think yeah, that in, yeah, in, in the financial finagling racket, then, uh, you know, talking to people, yeah. it does have uh, benefits because it gives you um, insider information, which is uh, how those people yeah, make their money. Sure. Not him personally, yeah. of course. I'm talking about that's, how, that's what the city uh, revolves on, insider information. True. One other observation, which I haven't had picked up. Now, everyone said, did he plan this date to uh, do the general election? Mm. Um, and, and I think he was forced into it quite quickly, because if you listen to his words, he said the plans for the D-Day were planned before the election was going to happen. Yeah. Therefore, and he only had about six weeks' notice that the uh, D-Day events turn up. So he probably decided really last minute, and that sort of reads between the lines. You see what I mean? Because he said... The plans in the diary for my, uh, you know, for the D-Day events of what I was going to attend and what I wasn't was planned before the yeah. election. The election came up right. before I didn't attend to talk about it. Which, which makes it even um, more bizarre yeah. that he missed it. That's not an excuse at all. That's digging himself no. in deeper. Absolutely it is. So I'm just trying to read the whole, trying to find the right. whole picture. You d- don't try to bend your brain around it, uh, Luke, because um, it will uh, make your eyes go crossed. Don't th- look for any sense in any of this. But I wish you all the best. Thanks a lot, mate. 0345 6060 973. Stockport. Robert. Oh, Nick. Love your programme. Thanks. Love listening to it. Um, I just had to come in on this, uh, some of your other callers, about this offshore financial situation, which I just find it disgusting and outrageous. The only people that mention about all this money offshore is obviously the unions, financial pressure groups, the Labour Party economists and investigative journalists. Obviously, the Tories would never want to mention it because they put all their money there. Um, I just find it really interesting. And some economists have pointed out, if, you've, if you're money, you, moving your money offshore, you're basing the company of money launders and criminals. Yeah. And uh, I just, I would like to see the Labour Party do something about it. I just wonder if they're ever going to do it. The um, human race needs to fix this problem because the, 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 the wealth that all of us create is not distributed in any way evenly 
uh, or, or fairly to the people that create the wealth. It is, it is grasped by the, a vanishingly few number of people who are so spectacularly rich that it's difficult to comprehend the kind of money that we're talking about. We're talking about hundreds of billions of pounds. M money that's so, that's so much that they, they have a hobby which is leaving this world and going to another one. Yeah. I just find it interesting that, uh, you know, you take companies like Amazon, Apple, Starbucks. Ferro Rocha had a turnover in this country of about 1.4 billion. Ferrero and uh, after they paid the holding company Luxembourg, they only yeah. paid £110,000 in tax. Right. That, you could say that for so many different companies. And what I, we're really going to have to fix this at some point. Otherwise, it's going to get worse because it's got significantly worse in the last few decades. In 1960, the CEO of a major corporation earned about 40 times as much as the average worker in that organization. Not, not the poorest worker, not the cleaner, but the average worker, about 40 times as much. And that is an inducement to, you know, do well and get up the corporate ladder because 40 times as much as the average worker, that's a big chunk of change. But that's not enough. Because the more you get, it's, uh, it is, must be like a sickness, the more that you want. And now, that same CEO is earning something of the order of 350 times as much as the average worker in their organisation. So everybody in that organisation is poorer by comparison, and yet they've created the wealth that is now being enjoyed by fewer and fewer people. And that, you could extend that example to the planet, to all of us. All of us are beavering away, creating wealth, but we're not actually enjoying the fruits of that labour because we're just about struggling to get by. I mean, there's an enormous amount of money around. Just, just walk through Chelsea. Walk through the well-off area near where you live. There will be one. And all of those houses look, they look like they've got a lot of money in there, but none of it's falling on you. And it's not an accident, and it's not uh, that everybody is struggling to get by. It's that all of the money that we create, all of the wealth, used to be more evenly distributed. And by increment, now it's uh, distributed to um, just a couple of people right at the very, very top who exist only as a cloud of smoke for tax reasons. Got to go. Thanks for all that. Uh, if you missed any of uh, today's uh, Super Show, then you will find that it is available on uh, Catch Up on Global Player. If you've got a stupid smart speaker, the magic phrase is play Nick Abbott the whole show podcast. Search that phrase online. It's on Global Player. It's exclusive to Global Player. We take the news and the ads out. It takes less time to listen to. It's called Nick Abbott the whole show podcast. Uh, if you don't have Global Player, it's free. Get it from your app store or globalplayer.com. And with it, you can pause and rewind live radio. I'm going to be back tonight at 10 o'clock. 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 Back tonight.